This episode is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Red Hot Comic Book Movie News. Shooting up your butthole. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly Planet. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday. And with me, as always, is my co-host, Nick Mason. I love that. No, that's get on with it, Mason. Oh, a bit of drama. That wasn't for you to... That wasn't encouragement. That was... Let's go. Oh, yeah, And great. stop slacking. Okay. Yeah. Do you feel we're both been slacking? Just some... you. Huh, interesting. Yeah. Wow. Wow, big talk from a man with a broken laptop. Hey, <laughs> don't say that. Okay. Don't say that big I... Talk, big talk from a guy where I got here at midday and it's one o'clock because you've got a broken laptop. No, that we recorded a thing before. No, we didn't record a thing before. That's true. <laughs> and yes. also, you got here at like 20 past. That's true. Also, yes. <laughs> All these yeah. things are true. <laughs> but yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I dropped my laptop and I smashed the screen. So look, man, I don't know. I'm just making do with my dad's Lenovo tablet slash got a keyboard staple to it. I think we can get a uh, sponsorship out of this? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, okay. I think it's from like 20. We're making do with my dad's <laughs> Lenovo tablets. <laughs> Hey, good. when I need to make do, when my good when my good laptop breaks. <laughs> now, Mason, anyway, you should call it a lap drop. That, thank you. Yeah, I, te- I road tested that earlier, and your dad laughed. So, <laughs> so it's a good joke. It's got to hit the dad market. Yeah, it has yeah. To hit the dad market. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, uh, just before we get into the news, I just wanted to say I'm on a podcast this week called Fofop Mason, Whoa. which I've been on before. It's Charlie Clawson and Will Anderson's podcast, but they often split off and they do they do separate guests. And uh, we recorded one where we talked about dad <laughs> stuff. Obviously, Mason. Do you think it's because? you and whatever guest Will had wouldn't get along? Do you think that's no, why they separated yeah, you? Yeah, no, I think he's doing that on purpose. Yeah. I think he knows what will happen. Yeah. It'll just be a biff, you know? It'll be a biff. It'll just be me getting biffed <laughs> no. by, by a really popular comedian. Sure. Yeah, whoever that may be. We talked about, uh, uh, you know, do you know about es- Eshays? Yeah, sure. Uh-huh. I hadn't heard of that. So uh-huh. we went through all of that and the fact, they're just fashion icons. Just just a fascinating rabbit hole, basically. Yeah, right. There you if go. If you want to check that out. I was also on another podcast, which is coming out next week. Uh, Lawrence's podcast, who does editing. It's called Another Happy Pod, uh, which, um, which I'll talk about that next week. We'll talk about it. But what, were you on something? Well, I wasn't on something, but I'm going to be on something, folks. So if you're listening. Drugs? Yeah. That's gonna... illegal. You'll go to jail, no, Mason. I'm going to be on drugs, but also. Uh, if you're listening to this the week it comes out, uh, I will be on a live episode of Book Cheat <gasps> on the 10th of December in Melbourne. Wow. Uh, with uh, host Dave Warnicky and guest uh, fellow guest Naomi Higgins. And we what a are gonna, we're gonna we're gonna hear about a festive book and have a fun time. And uh, you can come and watch us record that. So is it t- a Christmas carol? We don't know. I don't know yet. Is it that book you can get like an order for kids and it's like a Christmas story, but you put your put kids your name in there, yeah. whatever? Is if, it that? If, if Dave hasn't done that and he just reads out, he's got two versions and one says Mason, one says Naomi. And he's just like, <laughs> I'll be bitterly disappointed. <laughs> and the crowd are just getting increasingly bored. And they're like, oh, that was five minutes. We'll never go back. Oh, he's bringing out another book. <laughs> oh, it's just the, the other, other guest's name. Uh, but I imagine it? ticket links will be in the description of this podcast or you can go to uh, Dave Warnicke's Book Cheat Instagram page, right. Book Cheat Pod, and there'll be a link you'll there find, if you want to buy tickets. You. I would love to see some listeners there. I won't have a that. chat to them afterwards. What day is that on? That sounded vaguely threatening. I'll have a chat to you, we'll mate. sort that out. Yeah, we'll I thought Saturday. You. There'll be a big biff. <laughs> So, Mason, if people do want to skip ahead. Oh, oh. Also, uh, uh, use offer code CHRISTMAS. You get 20% off the tickets. I do. Yeah. Just me. Thank no, you. No, for you it'll be more. Oh. <laughs> we've, we've flagged your IP address. <laughs> I'll be on Mason. Uh, so this is the news of the week we're going to be getting to because Collings is editing this. He always puts time codes below. So James Gunn's got some DC news, Mason. DC news? That's right. Then we've got some trailer editing, mm-hmm. Mandalorian season three release date. Then it's just trailers ahoy all the way mm-hmm. to the movie we're talking about this week. We're talking Super Mario Brothers movie time, Cocaine <laughs> Bear, Transformers Rise of the Beast. Uh, there's a legacy of Ant Man something, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, mm. and then we're going to be talking about Glass Onion, which I would say if you haven't seen it at all, which you probably haven't because it was in cinemas for eight minutes, mm-hmm. uh, maybe skip that entirely. But we're going to do non spoilers and then and then that's spoilers. exactly right. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, there's something for everyone. I think I agree. Whether you like chilling mysteries or cocaine bears, <laughs> there is something for you. I agree. Mm. All right, let me just scroll up the top using the touchpad that this is also. It does both. <laughs> okay. Which I wasn't on board with initially, but it's better than the trackpad. Yeah, right. So I've embraced the touchpad. So you've got the touchpad and the trackpad there. Uh, yeah, well, no, sorry, the touch screen yeah, yeah. and the trackpad. Mm-hmm. But it's very non-responsive, mm-hmm. the trackpad. I hate this thing. <laughs> and I will it break it. It does both. 
Not well. I hate this thing and I will wreck it. Nice. So James, I if we indiv- if we took out the individual words, I think we could put them together into something that sounds like a promo for this I agree. Thing. Yeah. So James Gunn, he's said that the DCU will be connected across TV, film, animation. And then someone called the Rabbit Opossum on Twitter said, are there plans for games to be connected to the DCU as well? Mr. Gunn, suck up much? (laughs) Uh, But no, good question. And James Gunn just said, yes. Nice. So that that obviously leaves some questions open uh, in terms of like, are we going to be getting movie adaptations, sorry, video game adaptations of movies? Mm. Are we going to be getting like spin-offs? Does that mean they're going to work in like the Suicide Squad game into the live action that's coming out? I would say no because that's already happening or whatever. Absolutely, What do you think this means? Look, I think it'll be more in the sense of... Mobile games. Mobile games. Mobile card games. Live (laughs) service. Loot boxes. Fortnite Star Wars content or yes. like what happened with the rise of sky that's right dc somehow was doing fortnite star wars content that's what we're doing <laughs> you remember that when they were like the emperor's alive in fortnite he's doing a dab <laughs> he's flossing but he's on he's that flossing those robes and he's on that, that big hook that he was on yeah whatever, that's right flinging him around the room um i think it'll be more in the style of speaking of james gunn it'll be more like i think probably the guardians of the galaxy games yeah i think this is just a fresh coat of paint on we're going to be doing some arkham asylum style games we're going to be doing some uh, Suicide Squad style games. Yes, like the, the, we will have more. We'll have costumes that are more accurate. We'll have a Robert Pattinson Batman costume for uh-huh. whatever Batman game. I would love a Robert Pattinson Batman game, but it's just the bit where he glides off the building. An endless runner. Yeah, but you just but you have, keep bouncing. Yeah, you got to see ground. how many things you can hit on the way down. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Look, I think it'll be. I think it'll be games inspired by the movies. Perhaps you don't think they're going to get like actors from the games to come over and be like, I'm Batman from the movie and now I'm here in a game. Oh. I'm, I'm in the movie and the game. Ooh. I'm going to put less effort into this one. Pretty che- pretty cheeky, right? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Pattinson seems like he'd be on board for a video game. Yeah, I don't, yeah but it's a lot of like dialogue recording it, and yeah. all of that. But uh-huh. yeah, because you remember the early Marvel games that was all, you know, they did a bunch of them. Robert Downey Jr. The was there, yeah. they, Like they did them all, Thor and whatever. But even like Green Lantern, they did a Ryan Reynolds one. Mm-hmm. Batman Begins got a game. Which apparently it's oh no it's not apparently I've played it. it's all right uh, they were going to do a Dark Knight game that got very close to nearly being not nearly being done but it was well on the way huh. that didn't end up happening so yeah it's interesting they're going back to that but also a bunch of games that were okay and didn't end up happening <laughs> yeah. yeah interesting yeah. I said it's interesting it is interesting I'm not denying that it yeah. is interesting you also tweeted a picture of the Kingdom Come cover you know where Superman's got his hands on the table and he's mm-hmm. like something's amiss here right. Uh, and it, and Where's just, my free bread? <laughs> what? He's at a restaurant. Okay. <laughs> Something's a miss here. <laughs> it says making plans. Okay. So whenever he tweets like a comic book image, I, th- I think he did a similar one for Thanksgiving where all the Justice yeah. Society or whatever of the mm. league are sitting around the table having a big turkey. I, I also think that he, you know, Twitter is is very good at misconstruing things. I think there was a, when he started, there was just an image of Superman or as Clark Kent sitting down to a, uh, you know, his typewriter and going, well, time to start on my next adventure or whatever. Yeah. And people were like, is this is super, is Superman coming? And it's like, no, I'm just, it's just him going, I'm starting work. Yeah. This is a. I'm sorry I did yeah, this. I'm sorry right. I said anything. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but also we're doing a movie where Clark Kent just sits down at his typewriter for two hours. If I was James Gunn, Mason, mm-hmm. and in a way I am because I'm a big creative. Sure. Um, and, I, and I've built my own universe also. At the risk of derailing this podcast, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to dispute you there. Yes, you're a big creative, <laughs> but I would get off Twitter completely. Yeah, I mean, not just because it's you know it's awful now because it's it's always been awful, mm-hmm. and just trying to do this and that like I hope that he doesn't look at anything. I hope he tweets and then he disappears. <laughs> sure, because uh-huh. my goodness, but he's, he's quite good at responding to people. Well, I that's think. true. Yeah. yeah, no, you're not wrong. Just another thing in DC news, Mason. Oh, in, in oh. fact, this week, if yeah. you recall. Is this one bit of news? No, this is one bit of news. Actually, we can talk about it in, in the, when we talk about the Guardians trailer. Okay, sure. So that's that's uh, you know. great, great, great. That's right. Uh, did you see that? There start w- the presses again. Whoa! That was a real stop the presses moment. But I think we should start the presses again. There was a line from uh, the the Shazam Two Fury of the Gods trailer, Mason, uh-huh. where he goes, "I just threw a freaking truck at a dragon. I love oh, yes. my life or whatever." Uh-huh. And people were like. Boo, this is why we hate movies. Why have you done this or whatever? Uh-huh. And David F. Sandberg, who directed this, uh, tweeted, no, it was cut before they did the trailer, but marketing has access to all the footage and can use deleted shots. They also ask you to shoot things specifically for the trailer. So apparently that line 
is not in the trailer where he's like, it's a, look at it me. It is in the trailer, it's not he's in the movie. Not, yeah, it's in the trailer, it's not in the movie. Okay, right. So there you go. Or he's, there's some, you know, he's at battle station, he's calling people up being like, cut the line with a dragon on the bus. I thought it was really funny, but yeah. I think I misread this. <laughs> I'm crying. I'm crying over here right now. <laughs> so Guys. there you go. I'm excited for that though, I think maybe. I don't know. I would like to see Shazam maybe one day fight Black Adam, but I don't think that that's, <laughs> is that on the cards? Again, I don't think tonally, <laughs> and it's not even that, you know, Traditionally. Totally. Are they that different? Really? No, but I'm saying like, you know, traditionally in the comic books, Captain Marvel Shazam is, is you know, very, very sincere, goody two-shoes kind of character. Yeah. And in this he's – and and that, I guess, works against the very sincere evil or anti-heroism of Black Adam. Oh. But in this universe, one is very serious and stoic and one is just like, I just threw a Buster Dragon, bro. No, they took that out. But uh, I see, I see why you think that. But they actually, I've never thrown a bus at a dragon. Ugh. I mean, he did it, but, but I he, could. Yeah, he did it. He did yeah. it, but they take the line out. Yeah, is what I'm right, saying. Right, right. I thought you were going to say like Black Adam was like too tonally different and dark than the Shazam to cross over. Oh, but no, that's not true. Obviously, no. that's not what you said at all. I just think it'd be just Shaz- It'd be Black Adam laying into him, and and this guy's that, like, would that be so bad? <laughs> well, I, I'm being punched over here. <laughs> Can you believe this? I can't believe this. Mm. I love my life. So, yeah, there you go. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I think I'd, it'd be interesting to see that now that James Gunn has taken over, what does that mean for The Rock in the DCU, whatever it's called, mm. at the moment? Because, you know, I, I think maybe if that movie had made a billion dollars, there would have been conversations of, well, this guy is the linchpin of the universe. Yeah. But it seems as it, as it looks like that movie is not profitable. I don't know. We'll, we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see, Mason. Mm-hmm. Do you know the Mandalorian season three got a release date? No. It's March 1st. That's the release date. Of what year? Great question. Let me just check. Check your notes. It says never. It says never actually coming out. Oh, and cause no. Because you, you asked. March of never. It's because you asked, This though. is my fault. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, man. Yeah. Can I take it back? Can I'll you take, take it back? back? I wish I never said it. <laughs> I wish it never were. <laughs> Well, if it's if people are listening to this in the podcast, yeah. that didn't work. If you could all stamp your feet and wish <laughs> that the Mandalorian would come back, it'll come back. Oh, if we all believe. <laughs> so it looks like no, Mason. I think everybody's done it. Apparently, the trailer. Uh, apparently, it's you, the, you see monkey lizards and okay. these, these, several Mandalorians working together. Sounds like a guy who hasn't made a trailer. It telling his boss that he's made the trailer, but he can't find it currently. Oh, there's monkeys, Ooh. monkey lizards. Um, Apparently, you see Coruscant as well. Okay, all right. Katie Sackhoff is she's Bo-Katan, and she's like, "Why are you doing the whatevers? I don't like it. Give me the give me that sword you have. Okay, I want sure. it. I want that sword." Mm. So yeah, there you go. That's that's all happening and and happening. But let's not talk about a trailer that we haven't seen, Mason. Okay. Let's talk about some that we have. Okay, sure. Man, the Good Ship trailer is hauling quite the cargo this week, Mason. It's hauling ass. That's right. So, <laughs> trailers are horror, everyone. Let's kick things off with the Super Mario movie trailer. Okay. That's what it's called. All right. So we get the reveal of a bunch of more voice actors in this, like That's people true. actually talking. Yeah. We, of course, get um, Donkey Kong. Mm-hmm. We see Donkey Kong. We don't yes, see him right. voiced. We don't see him voiced. Yep. We get Anya Taylor-Joy as that's the, right. the princess. We get Luigi, mm-hmm. which I think uh, Charlie Day works very well as Luigi. Do, just doing his regular voice, nobody seems to mind. Well, it works though, yeah. right? It's, I uh-huh. think the casting totally works. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, I don't, again, I don't love the Chris Pratt thing, but <laughs> you, you, you kind of, I feel like I am going to get used to it. But I've not said, oh, look, I can't remember what I've said in, in previous episodes, but it's f- probably fine. Yeah. It seems fine. <laughs> it's, you seem, it seems fine. Yeah. But I thought in general though, and I think a lot of people seem to be on board with, with this opinion, my opinion, mostly, oh, yeah. as a creative. Mm-hmm. Is that it's? It just looks really good. It does look like good. visually, and that's a lot of the elements that they bring in from the games. It seems like interesting ways. We're even getting Mario Kart. We They're are. not going to do a separate Mario Kart movie. Okay, we're going to get a Mario Kart. I mean, they will person. do a separate Mario Kart movie if this movie does well. That's and true. People respond. If people turn their dials to yes, yeah, yeah, yeah The yeah, Mario yeah. Kart scene happens. Oh, we will wow. definitely be getting a Mario Kart movie. But yeah, we're getting and we're getting. A, you know, they're they're racing on the Rainbow Road. It seems. Mm. Uh, yeah. Normally, the Rainbow Road's in the big in space. So oh, it's, yeah. it's a creative decision that I wouldn't have made as a creative. <laughs> as a creative, but, uh, a creative sometimes sure. you take some liberties, though, you know? Mm, yeah, yeah. I that. imagine that's part of being a creative, right? <laughs> yeah, I imagine. Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Definitely. I, I enjoyed, like, Donkey Because as not a creative, James, yeah. I will have a lot of questions for you about being a creative. Yeah. Which, obviously, if you're a creative, you'll be able to answer you'll, you'd also, very easily. No, you'd also appreciate that. There'll be no pauses or. No, but you're a boring Norman. 
like man. So I don't know whether, <laughs> you're, boring whether your grey kind of black yeah. and white view of the world uh-huh. is something that I could like bring any kind of colour to. Okay. Like there's only so much my creativity can bring to you. It's kind of it's innate in me when it's okay. not in you. That's probably true, but nonetheless I'm going to ask a lot of questions <laughs> about the creative process of a big creative. <laughs> <laughs> that you again, you'll be able to easily. That's answer. me. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That, not, I mean, easily, sure. Mm. For those who understand being creative, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Uh, no, I'm very much looking forward to Super Mario Brothers. I showed my my son, and he's like, "Yep, 100, <laughs> percent love this." And so, no, I, I'm I'm really looking forward to it. And I think the designs of Mario and Luigi, especially, they do look very good. I, agree. I think they're 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 not one to one the the present day video games no. but i think they've got a good texture to them there's there's somewhere midway they're way closer to cartoons obviously but there's somewhere yeah. midway between cartoons and you know they've got sort of real life textures on them and they've also gone back it seems to they like they use donkey kong like the older one right, got the okay. tie and the whatever uh-huh. and i have people here kids um in the backgrounds because my son and his friend are playing nintendo switch next next door because mm. claire's away and this is um, this is how i'm parenting this weekend <laughs> yeah so, just from uh-huh. another room yeah great yes. uh-huh. <laughs> uh yeah uh, and you're on a different laptop it's all been a disaster yeah, mate. More like lap drop well mason as i said i just I, wanted that second wave of laughter there yeah you're gonna be I can imagine that. it yeah. yeah well you know you know you, you've got a joke you're not creative but <laughs> you've got you've got a joke i've got a joke that's right <laughs> yeah and I guess if let's go over to something a little bit more adult, Mason. Cocaine Bear. Whoa. Which uh, was probably su- the surprise hit trailer of the week. Yeah. Based on a true story of a bear that ate a drop shipment of cocaine. That's right. I 80s. believe our pals over at Dugo on have done an episode about it. Have you listened to that? Because I would, I, I would love to know, but I also kind of don't want to know going into this how much of this is true. I don't think you killed 400 people or whatever maybe is in this trailer. Uh-huh. But how much, it, was it like a rampage? I can't remember. I have listened to the episode though. But, okay. uh, but yeah. m- like most fact-based podcasts, I listen to it and I have a great time and then it all dribbles out of my brain. But yeah. uh, I have room for one fact, I think. <laughs> and it's the fact that they did it. Yes, that's right. Mm. So, Mason, I've just got to hear some that CNN.com, okay. uh, which, by the way, CNN, terrible. I know people might be like, this is left media or whatever. I don't think so. It's just a piece of shit. <laughs> News network. But anyway, Mason, <laughs> just union They busting. should call it PSNN. Whoa. Yeah, P-O-S-N-N. You'll say anything. I know. Yeah. They suck. But it's but it's uh, apparently so this bear just ate a bunch of cocaine and then died. <laughs> okay, <laughs> great. So uh. based on a true story in the <laughs> loosest sense because they've just turned this into like Jaws. They have turned it into but Jaws. But that's terrific. It looks really terrific. Yeah, Elizabeth Banks is directing this, I think. Oh, is she? I didn't know I that. So. Okay, cool. Um, but, of course, we we see in the trailer uh, we got we got Alden Ehrenreich. Yep, love Always that. Always good to see him in the mm. thing. Uh, and uh, other stuff. And other stars and stuff. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So there you go. Looking Looks forward like to- a bit of fun. Good CGI in the bear, I thought. Great bear yeah. CGI, Mason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's now talk about something. Oh, also, the late Ray Liotta is in. Oh yeah. So, yeah, how much stuff did he make before he died, Mason? Great There's question. Still stuff. How does he? How is he doing this? How did he? How is he doing this? I don't I mean, think he's dead. Is what wow. I'm saying. I mean, as a creative, I'm sure you would know. Would I know? Yeah, that you would know how a fellow creative would do this after their own death. <laughs> Surely you have a plan for continuing your work after your own death. Well, I couldn't really if I if I divulge that now. What would be left after my death? What would carry on if people know what's coming? It's like one. when David Bowie released that album after he was dead. That's right. You know, I think he released that album before he he death. Did he? I think so. Yeah. Well, you, you I don't know. I'm just yeah. about creatives. I don't know about dates. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. The, the little people can worry about dates. That's right. So CGI though and stuff, Mason, Transformers Rise of the Beasts has a trailer finally. Mm. This is a trailer my son has been asking me about every week for about a year. And now he's, it's out, you're like, no, they cancelled it. <laughs> but literally Sorry. he's like, when, is that tr- wh- when can I see it? And I'm like, when it's out, I will show you. Like the second it comes out, I will show you. And I did. Mm. It came out uh, before school and I was like, maybe I'll show him after school. And I was like, no, true to my word, I said, sit down, we're going to be watching this Transformers trailer. <laughs> you busted it on his school. classroom <laughs> and you're like, School's cancelled. School's cancelled, everyone. <laughs> All of you get out. All of you get this class is over. <laughs> now, son, I've had this trailer transferred to a VHS tape <laughs> and I'm going to wheel in the blocky square TV <laughs> from my from childhood yep. <laughs> on the trolley and we're going to watch this trailer. <laughs> so Stephen Capel Jr. is directing this who directed Creed 2. Oh. And this time around, uh, what are they called? The Maximals? Animals. What are they called? Trans animals. Yeah. Maxim- Beast Wars. Beast Wars, yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
Yeah, so yeah. there you go. So what's happening here is this time around, Optimus Prime, but he's a gorilla or whatever. <laughs> but he's not Optimus Prime, is he? No, because there's already an Optimus Prime. This is Optimus Primal. I don't remember anything as far as I know. Yeah. Maybe they've changed it. I mean, it you seems know, like the it's... Bay movies were, were were notorious for just... Whatever. Whatever, exactly. Just take a name, put it on a different Transformer, well, redesign the Transformer, maybe, do whatever. As a creative, I think mm. you made some bold choices. Okay. But what were you saying, though? Uh, what I was saying is, as I understand it... Bold the... but bad. Right, bold but bad, absolutely. Which you can do, which in a way is good, isn't it? Because it gets people talking, doesn't it? Um, as I understand it, the Beast Wars continuity. Yeah, some of it at least. Yeah. Actually, I was going to say, I was going to say, as you know, in the Beast, I actually don't know anything about it. <laughs> You're just going to stop. Well, I was going to say that. So, so the Beast, so the 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 original Transformers, the they the G ones, the G ones, they landed on Earth so in the comic books and the and the cartoons. They landed on Earth several million years ago, Dinosaurs. and then their ship was, uh, then their ship was. Trapped under the earth, and then they emerged in the present day. Except for the Dinobots, yeah, which in the comic books emerged earlier. They left during the prehistoric era, and that's why they've got Dinobots, right? Forms. But in the cartoon, I think they were built in the present day. Yeah, I think but you're the right. Beast Wars characters—they're a different arc, or something. Yes, but I believe Optimus Primal was inspired by Optimus Prime. Yes, but they went the 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 Maximals went back in time, I think. Okay, so they arrived on Earth before the regular Autobots and, and Decepticons. Is that I what think. happened in the show? I don't know. Is Optimus Primal a Prime? No, I don't think he is. Yeah, but he's just like inspired. He's a weeb. Yes, for Optimus Prime. He, I, and I believe in most versions of the cartoon and the toys and etc. His face looks almost identical to Optimus yes. Prime. Yes, because he... really they just wanted an Optimus Prime that turned into a gorilla. Yeah, but they. Or they wanted an Optimus Prime style character for the for the Beast Wars cartoon, but they couldn't get Optimus Prime because it wouldn't fit the continuity. I yeah, guess, okay, even though yeah, it wouldn't yeah. really matter. So they're like, yeah, okay, well, Optimus. Prime. It says here, uh, is Prime a pro- is Primal a Prime? He's a conglomeration of primes. Oh, yuck! Uh, <laughs> assembled into a single mighty force for good. Yes, I think he gets the spark later and whatever. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I always like the idea of Optimus Primal and, and the Beast Wars. I mean, I wouldn't say there's so much in disguise. For one, mm. like it's a gorilla, sure. But, but it's a it's, robot gorilla. And it's like, you know, it's like 15 feet tall, That's which true. is bigger than I would say most gorillas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to so say So you'd all. have to do is if you were Optimus Primal and you wanted to fit in in society, yeah. you'd have to say, uh, you'd have to seed some some information on the internet and on newspapers and et cetera that Mighty Joe Young has escaped yeah. from his cage and is rampaging across the city. And he glued a bunch of metal to himself. Exactly. And then when you and show leave, up. And leave him alone. Right. And then when you show up and you're battling the Decepticons, people will be like, oh, that's just Mighty Joe Young. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Let's leave the, him the alone. The big gorilla. Let's leave him alone, as the newspaper suggested. But they could do that because they're internet people. That's right. They could do that. Yeah. Anyway, what I was going to say yeah. is um, this is, of course, similar to the whichever Transformers movie was that introduced the Dinobots, but it seems to yeah. me they're at least going to integrate them more than that movie did, which is have them show up at the start and then show up at the end and mill around for a bit and then leave and never come back. Did they even show up at the start? I don't even remember. We did. We did watch them. Yeah, I don't know. But I, I, I will not go again. Back. I cannot. I do. I cannot risk thinking about those movies again. <laughs> what is interesting, though, I think about Optimus Primal in this, and we get some snippets of the other ones. Yeah. There's a kind of a Ron Perlman, by the way. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Again, Boy, I voice. think the appeal of Optimus Primal is visually that in various cartoons and comics and etc., he looks like a gorilla on the outside, but when he converts to robot mode, there's a lot of like. Red highlights and colors and yeah. etc. So you can tell the versions apart. Yes. Where in this clip, he's just a gray gorilla who turns into a gray robot man. Yeah, I didn't. It's I didn't really love that. Largely yeah. identical. Maybe they'll tweak the colors for the final release. Maybe yeah. this is an ugly Sonic situation. <laughs> I thought. I thought similarly with. I thought this was a downgrade on the Optimus Prime design from the previous one as well. Ah. It looks simplified. I think the Bumblebee one uh-huh. absolutely nailed. It. I thought yeah. that was perfect. And I think this is a little kind of like. It he looks quite weedy, much. doesn't he? Yeah. It? I mean, I, look, it, it, for, for me personally, it is still an it's upgrade. Quite, 100%. It's still an upgrade on the Michael Bay versions, which I know a lot of people... I, I, I think, like, technically they're, they're a remarkable achievement. Yes, uh-huh. Like, in terms of how they operate. And, yeah. And, but I yeah. also think from, from, especially when you think about the later uh, Optimus Primes in the later Transformers movies, yeah. the Michael Bay ones, they moved so far away from... He transforms into a from a truck into a robot that looks markedly like a truck, and you can see how all the components yeah. transform. Whereas the later versions of that 
Optimus Prime. He's just a very sort of glossy, smooth robot man. Well, because he didn't transform. Yeah. Because he just transformed off screen or not at all in those those later movies. Mm. But yeah, you're absolutely right. But I think even seeing like RC again, which I think even I preferred the design from the other, the previous movie uh and whatever. And I think even the Bumblebee design I think looks better. And this is all like aesthetic, you know, choices that exactly, maybe I yeah. wouldn't agree with as a creative. But, no. <laughs> but that being But you can understand why they'd make those choices. Sure. But that being said, like I am I like the director of this and I, I am looking forward to a movie where I can tell what's happening and that's terrific, isn't it? And who's uh, who's who and whatever. There's that moment where um we see uh Who's the Porsche again? Jazz probably. Jazz yeah, wasn't yeah. I was going to say he's jazz dead, but this is a prequel and also not connected. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But um the the VW bus I believe is Wheeljack. Who doesn't okay. normally turn into a VW bus? He turns into like a very specific race car. Like right, a, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh, it's Mirage. Oh, and of course it's Mirage because so, he generates illusions. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, so there you go. We're idiots, aren't we? We are idiots. But, you know, you get the cheetah one and whatever and various others and, uh-huh. and that's cool, I mm. think. And that's cool. Do you think they're going to have dinosaur Megatron who might also be original Megatron? I can't remember. I just want a Megatron that turns into a gun that children can play with, all right? <laughs> is, that so, is that so hard? It's very reasonable, I Mason. just want the one that I had as a kid where he turns into a gun and it looks like a gun and it doesn't have the orange cap at the end so you can see that it's a fake gun. It looks like a real gun. So you can that's roll a 7-Eleven if you want to. Exactly. Yeah. I can put the scope on and the, the shoulder stock. Love that. And be like, give me all your money. I've got a real gun. <laughs> that's all I want, all right? It's all I want out of this. It's all the fans want. Yes. Yeah, I completely agree. I'm so mad he's never turned into a real gun. No, yeah. not even a turret. Didn't even do the big Galvatron turret, Mason. Mm. Well, the only reason he turns into a gun is because that was the toy that they had, wasn't it? Yes, that's Because right. he was from a separate toy line, a Japanese toy line that yeah. of a robot that turned into a gun which wasn't connected to a bunch of the other yeah. toy lines. <laughs> So that's why he this turns into is, a gun. Look, even as a, as someone who you know has been a fan of Transformers since uh, uh, being a small child, mm. this uh, this particular segment of the show, we're absolutely going to get emails from people being like, they they don't understand any of the continuity. They've ruined this. I us, don't us care. personally. Yeah. Also, I've seen all of these movies and they don't understand it right? either. So. Tell, tell them about it. I'm, tell, not ma- I'm not making these decisions. If you're considering sending us a long email about how we don't understand Transformers continuity, send it to Michael Bay instead. He's the one who's ruined us. <laughs> I used to know all this stuff. It's gone. <laughs> and it's Kelsey Grabber's fault. That's right. Yeah. All right, here we go, Mason. It was also Brazilian Comic-Con time. I don't know if Ooh. you saw that. There was a Legacy of Ant-Man trailer, which was just like, remember Ant-Man? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, sure. He had a few movies and he was in the other movies. I, yes, yeah. I remember him. And whatever. Mm-hmm. Remember Ant Man was maybe 2015, the first one. I remember Ant Man, yeah. And Ant Man 2 and Civil War and Infinity War. And There's been at least second, a couple of Ant Man movies. Second Infinity War. It's undeniable, War. yeah. So, you know, I'm okay with that. And then Kang's there and everyone, he came on stage and everyone's like, whoa, we love actors. And, you know, yeah. you know how people do these yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I get it. Ant Man. I understand. Quantum Realm. I get it. Michelle Pfeiffer. Michael Douglas. Mm. I get it, Mason. Oh, you get it. It's a recast of the, the kid and whatever. Sure, I get you get it. all those things. I get it. But let's talk about the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 trailer, yes. which seems to be the one that they showed at something else earlier this year. Okay. The same one. We see I like see, right. Baby Rocket. Did we get an, Did we get a description of the trailer? I think some of it leaked right. as well. I saw some images of it at the very mm. least. Yeah. And the big question on everybody's mind who's is gonna die? who'd be dying in this? Who's going to get murked in this movie? The trailer looks like it's pointing to Rocket. So it's not Rocket. Yeah. It's probably Drax. It's probably Drax. Because David Batista doesn't want to do any more of these movies. He has to be shirtless and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And whatever and covered in paint. We did mention, you know, in in previous, uh, I think it might have been last week's episode Mm. for the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. Yeah. He was wearing a vest the entire time, which is the the classic kind of actor signal that they don't want to take this show off anymore. They don't want to do it anymore. Exactly. The Blade 3 wearing the long sleeve shirt. Exactly. They don't want to do the working out anymore. Spider Man 3. Which is fair enough, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Tom McGuire didn't really bother getting getting into shape. And there's a moment where you see the back of him and it's clearly not him. Yeah, right. Uh Which, again, yeah, I totally get yeah. it. But, I mean, that being said, though, Batista did say, when Batista said specifically, once I've fulfilled my contract with Marvel, I'm not doing it anymore, Yeah, that was, I believe, when James Gunn had been fired from Disney and Marvel. No, I think he said it since did then. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah. Also, I, they, they're, they're phasing out these Guardians anyway. I see. Because they're James Gunn's Guardians. I'm not saying we won't see some of them pop mm-hmm. up yeah. and we'll probably get another team and maybe the yeah. like Mantis will come over or whatever. Uh-huh. But uh, but but yeah, I think we're gonna okay. for the moment at least rest these. Again, nothing is permanent. Yeah. They'll probably all come back at some point. Who do you think will be put on the new team? 
Well, I wonder if they're going to use any of the team that we saw in the previous mm. movie, like that's Stallone's team. And yeah, Michelle so. Yeoh's on it. Yeah. Miley Cyrus is yeah. a robot. Michael Rosenbaum is a frozen-headed guy. Uh-huh. I mean, there's, well, there's a bunch frozen of... Frozen Rosen. Frozen Rosen. There's a bunch of them yeah. in the comics as well. Exactly. What was yeah. the original team? can't remember. The original team is closer to... The Stallone's team. Yeah. So the Frozen Rosen and et cetera. Who was the dude with the Captain America? He found the Captain America shield, but it's not. I can't remember. Uh, he looks like a Silver Surfer looking dude. Yeah. I can't remember his name. Yeah. I mean, so a lot of the characters, I believe, in Stallone's team share names with the original team. Yeah, but they're different. Well, they a lot of them look a little bit different visually. Yeah. So let's, let's, let's talk about this trailer, though, Mason. Okay. We, we get yeah. that Golden Man. We do. We get Adam. First appearance of well, second appearance of Adam Warlock. Yes. Second appearance. Well, I was in the cocoon. He was in the cocoon, but this is the first time we're seeing him as Will Poulter. There we go. Yes, as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Zoe Saldana is back, obviously as Gamora, but different Gamora than previous Gamora yes. from a different dimension. Doesn't know anybody Gamora because she's from before. That's correct. They yes. all met and whatever. We don't. See, uh, did we see Cosmo in this? Well, she was in the special recently, anyway. But I don't remember seeing her in the show. Oh, uh, we don't see, it, but we do see Rocket. He has a little otter friend. Well, speaking of people who might continue on, yes. maybe the otter will be on the new team. Who's the voice of the otter? Do we know? I don't know. Oh, uh, I bet it's out. I bet the information is out there though. Because Daniela Daniela Melchior, who played Ratcatcher Two, uh-huh. is in this movie, but I don't know who's. I see. Well, apparently, she's in it. This might be one of those things that's not actually right. Yeah. But, uh, you know, as we know, uh, uh, Rocket hates being referred to as a raccoon because he, yeah. doesn't, he, he doesn't know what a raccoon is. But we see in this trailer what appears to be a raccoon that appears to be Rocket or might be Rocket being stolen from some sort of yeah. facility. Maybe it's a, a wildlife shelter or a zoo or something like that. I think he's, he's a result of the high evolutionary, whatever his name is. I think uh-huh. he's an experiment of that, right? Yes, I think so. I yeah. assume so. Well, mm-hmm. they'll make it that, yeah. But it looks like he may be at the zoo. He had a little otter friend, and that otter friend has also been augmented. I don't know. Because also the otter mm-hmm. was also, wait, it says Lady Gaga is going to voice. Okay. Which also makes sense because Bradley, Bradley Cooper is. They were both in A Star is Born, yeah. That's a, a, the very least a, a rumor. We say it makes sense like anything it in makes Hollywood sense. makes sense. Also, lot- it's the vibe. I remember James Gunn tweeting something a while back where can I put something in that will break the continuity of the first movie or whatever. And I think we even speculated that he's going to put the otter in it because in when they get arrested, it says one of his known associates is the otter. Okay. And maybe they don't know each other. Right. And they meet okay, in this sure, or whatever. Sure, sure. Uh-huh. Or maybe they do know each yeah. other. I don't know. Uh, but no, it's, uh, it's cool. I, I like a little otter. Show me an otter, Mason. Like a picture of an otter? Yeah. Or if you've got an otter on you. I don't. Well, then I don't I, want it, yeah. Ultimately, I think the best I could, even if I had an otter, even if I owned an otter, yeah. in this weather I wouldn't bring the otter out. It's too hot. Yeah, okay. It's too hot for it's too, an otter. It's too, it's too hot for an otter. It's too otter. There's some pictures of otters. What That's great stuff, that? Mason. Huh? Big fan. Pretty good. Are they right? friendly? To humans? Yeah. Mm, I don't know. We've got one here like eating a fish. It looks pretty vicious. Nah, sort of, dogs have teeth like, teeth like that. That's true. You know? Uh, here's, from, here's an article from News 13. Yeah. Rabbit otter bites Orlando woman. I think Arthur I say Blank. Orlando Bloom. <laughs> who, will be la- who later will be playing an otter in Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Oh, what? my God. Yeah. Rabbit otter bites Orlando woman after blanketing Critter. Yeah. So she blanketed him, presumably to eat him. Yeah. And then the otter ate her. <laughs> so the other thing is what, there's a couple of songs that they mash up in this as well, right? Okay. Because In the Meantime by um, – Space Hog. Yeah, and there's Space Hog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I've been yeah, waiting yeah, yeah. my whole life to say from Space, Space Hog. Hog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So wait, is that two s- songs they put together? So there's in the meantime the Space Hog song. Is there another song that's in this as well? The only one that I recognise was uh, in the meantime. Because the, the one, one that, that goes. goes <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's yeah. just the one song. Okay, cool. Yeah. I thought there might have been another one. So I guess that also fits in with um, because that's a ninety-five ish song. Something like that, yeah. Because he's got a zoom Mm. now. A zoom. Is Z U N E? Yes. That's that's right. I had one for a week, but it bricked. Okay. Because I heard they were the most more reliable than an iPad, iPod, or whatever. I had an iRiver at one point. Oh, what was that like? Pretty good. Pretty good. Was a real brick though. It didn't get bricked, but it was a real brick. Could you did you use it as a brick? You could, yeah. You built it into a house? Yes. Great. Yeah, yeah. It's terrific stuff, Mason. Built it into your house. That's why you're constantly hearing Space Hog. <laughs> what is that? Where's that coming from? Mm. 
That album was called Resident Alien. I don't believe you. No, it's true. There's also that show Resident Alien, mm, it's which true. is quite good. Is uh, anything else in this trailer, though? Uh, well, I was going to say a lot of people pointed out that the um, what, what I think is some members of the Guardians are wearing kind of primary coloured space suits. Yeah. A lot of people say, hey, does that on my eyes? It's 2001 A Space Odyssey. Oh, yeah, of course. And also they're wearing the original comic suits. They are, that's All true, original yeah. and they come back every now and then with the – they've got the star in the front yeah, and, yeah, and whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're not wearing the Ravenger – outfits that's true as much be this time Mason. Mm. so yeah anyways looks like a sad time where everyone's gonna cry and whatever as well that's right I think. yeah that's what we want isn't it that's all i want when i go to the cinemas i want to have the worst time of my life no i am looking forward to this that's why i go with you mate oh <laughs> come on mate <laughs> come on no generally we go separately due to, we do you know, often yeah yeah, yeah, so yeah it's often yeah. how it goes yeah absolutely yeah 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 uh, so can we move on to Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny? Yes, we can. I but... saw the, the image of this in YouTube okay. and I saw Dial of Destiny. And you thought and it I, was a fan I thing I thought or it was an, an ad for a phone company. Yeah, like um, I thought it was like they'd got yeah. Harrison Ford to do a... Yeah, or the Harrison Ford deepfake. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the youthified deepfake. The one that's in this movie, yeah, Mason. yeah, yeah. <laughs> And he's careening through the streets of Cairo, what have you? And then he he goes to he goes to use a public phone, but it isn't doesn't work. And then they're like, cut! And he's like, oh no! I'm, at least I've got this. I've got the Dial of Destiny on my Android phone. Or and I'm stoned. And I'm stoned. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But no, that's what it's actually called. How do yeah, you feel? It's fine. Okay. It doesn't matter ultimately. I mean, Spear of Destiny I was gonna sounds say, better. I was going to say because ultimately, uh, you know, there there was a a fairly well known, I think, point and click adventure game in the nineties. Yeah. In Indiana Jones one called and the Spear of Wait. It no, was just it? called and the Spear of Destiny. Called, wait, no, I'm thinking of the Fate of Atlantis. Yeah, but there was a Spear Man, of Destiny. I'm, something. I'm ruining continuity all over the place. But yeah, I believe there was a. Let me check. This, well, I mean, the Spear of Destiny. You know. Well, that was in um, Constantine. It was in yeah. Hellboy one or two. I can't yeah. remember. Oh, it's a comic arc, comic history. That's the one. Okay. So there you go. Mm-hmm. There you bloody go, mate. So it's just interesting that it is so close to a real. Yeah. Now, well, people have said dial as well. Like there's been many speculation about what does a dial mean. Okay. And some people have said because there is the de-aging moment, which they've said is just going to be in the opening sequence, that this is a time travel mechanic potentially. Oh. And there was a further rumour from a while back. And Bearing in mind, this is from one of our favourite people in the world, a legend of the game, uh, Doomcock. Oh, Doomcock Overlord DVD or whatever his name <laughs> yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, where he said that Phoebe Waller-Bridge is going to go through time and, and redo all his adventures. Wow. <laughs> An obvious lie. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I also... But better. No, I, I... And more woke. Look, I don't think he knows that is true, uh-huh. but I wouldn't put it past them. To do it. You think so? <laughs> well, also, because he talked about that being revealed at like an early screening and apparently there hasn't been any screenings, but, right. you know, but look, he's not a reliable source. Yeah, Mangold, <laughs> I think, James Mangold, the director, yeah. did come out today and be like, not true, not true. Yeah. All of this is lies. Yeah. So, oh, did he? Uh, specifically about that stuff? Let me find out. All right. What do I do while you're doing that? Just fill. I can fill with creative thoughts. Okay, great. I'm just going to have them, keep them to myself. Because like James Cameron... When I go into my mind, it's the best streaming service you wow, can get because wow, 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 there's wow. just so many, so many, so many active active participants in my mm. brain just jumping about and doing yeah, karate yeah. kicks and stuff. Yeah, how are you finding Twitter, Mason? I yeah. hate Twitter. <laughs> I hate it. Look, it's never been good. Let's okay, not kid yeah. ourselves. All right. So this this he's responding to a tweet that has since been deleted, and the person has gone on private. <laughs> because, <laughs> okay, I uh, love that. Because, uh, you know, they've, they've said a thing that clearly is not true yeah. and then they've been piled on, I imagine. Yeah. But he hasn't quote tweeted it. Re- Mangold has replied to it. One more time. No one is taking over or replacing Indy or donning his hat, nor is he being erased through some contrivance. And he never was, not in any cut or script, but trolls will troll. That's how they get their clicks. Well, Mason, I was wrong mm. to believe Doomcock. That's 14, right. And please, 16, don't, he says, and please don't exhaust me pointing out how once in a while a troll is right. Even a blind squirrel finds a nut now and then. <laughs> All one has to do is look at set photos and interviews and you get enough info to make wild guesses about a movie plot. The difference between trolling a-holes and everybody else is they are trying to make dollars off your feelings about other films and culture war politics. They push controversial guesses as coming from sources to gin up clicks. Let it go. End. Whoa. I don't believe him. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, but I don't believe him. We've got a different source. This is a different thing. I wouldn't. I would. I wouldn't put it past like exploring previous adventures, though, if it is time right. travel and whatever. But also, if it was literally Phoebe Waller Bridge going back and erasing previous movies, I don't care. Sure. Like I don't. Those movies already exist and whatever. Mm. But I thought this trailer, despite um, some some wonky moments in it, yeah, I I, I enjoyed yeah. it. And, and look, and, I, and I, yeah, I did very much so. Yeah. I think, but also like 
the contrivance of going back and altering things, I don't think that's going to happen. But yeah, but the know, bit with the boulder, the bit with the boulder, that's true. Well, I mean, they did it with Star Trek, but they were wise enough to do it. Yeah. You know, they, the the idea was well, this these new Star Trek movies are in a different continuity, and all the old stuff is still there. Yeah. So, what if Indiana Jones has to go back and do his adventures? Except now he's eighty. That'd be great. <laughs> Grady? Yes. He just doesn't doesn't make it out of the boulder. He's just puffed. <laughs> just squished immediately. Yeah. So I think that's just a, the the scene where they're in. Where, oh no, that's a different boulder. Yes. It's even smaller, and I think it's just a little callback. And mm. like, I know again, there's people who are like. You don't have to reference everything, but Indiana Jones, there are so many. I think you have to reference everything. I agree everything. also because then, then I recognize something. But mm-hmm. Indiana Jones, it's constant callbacks to previous adventures. It happens all the time. Do you remember in Temple of Doom where they call back where he reaches his gun to shoot the swordsman? I don't remember Except that, no. Temple of Doom is a prequel. Remember, he, and he doesn't have the gun. He goes I don't to remember this. Get it's not I there. I don't remember it. They point out the Ark of the Covenant in like I don't remember in that. Last Crusade. It's on the wall. I don't remember And that. then you see it again in Kingdom of the Crystal no, Skull. I don't remember that. Marion comes back. I don't remember That's a callback. No, I don't remember How are they going to get rid of Shia LaBeouf? I don't remember he that. died? I don't remember that. They just got the start. They go, I man. Re- I don't remember. You don't remember? I don't remember? Well, they haven't done this yet, so I don't know what you're not remember. remembering. Do you think they're going to be like, what happened to Mutt? Or he's a bad bloke and he died. I don't remember that. You don't remember it? I don't remember that. Is <laughs> <laughs> this the rest of the show? Yeah, I don't remember that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you think they've got to address Mutt? No, great question. <laughs> honestly, I first of all, I don't remember that, but honestly, to answer your question... <laughs> Uh, I think there might be a line. I think there might be a line. He's off at college or he's something. He's a bad guy. He because died. wasn't he? No, he'd be like mid-30s now, wouldn't he? Well, he's he? off at college anyway because he was dumb. <laughs> he was dumb, wasn't yeah. he? He had to get his GED or whatever. In being a dummy? In being a dummy. I think they will say something along the line. Because, you know, wasn't he a bad boy? He was a leather jacket wearing bad mm. boy. So I think they'll be like, well, he's getting his, he's getting his life back on track. now that, and, and, and maybe he'll be back in future, but he won't, obviously. <laughs> But I think he'd be like, yeah, he's off at college and I'm, I'm, I've got, I'm an empty nester and I'm, my, my wife's left me probably. And, yeah. And if only there were, maybe Waller Bridge were here. If only. If oh, here she is. Here she's here she right is. now. It's great. Yeah. I like the inclusion of Phoebe Love you at Fleabag, he would say. That's what he would say because mm-hmm. he's got a time machine in this. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I mean, again, like I didn't really like her role in Solo, that droid. But I like her. So I like seeing her in this. I'm like, no, I think this could work. I think also, yeah, there is a lot of CGI in this when people are like, we should go back to practical effects and whatever. But also Mm -hmm. a lot of those original movies, it's like it's matte paintings and and miniatures and and whatever. I don't remember that. I know you don't remember, but it did happen. No, I don't remember. And, and, you know, like fake little cars going off cliffs. Mm -hmm. I know you don't remember it, but it did happen. So I I don't think this looks bad. There's like the (laughs) de-aging. Yeah. Looks amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they pull that bag off and you see his face? Yeah. Holy shit. They're, I mean, look, there's, there. I think what this trailer il- illustrated is is two things. One, there were a couple of moments where he's obviously being body doubled by a stuntman. I was going to say, there's, 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 that, a, there's, there's a, that one there's a, bit on the horse. Where he's on yes, a horse. Where it looks bad, And yeah. uh, that look does not does not look great. But there is that moment where you mentioned where he's he's clearly, he, I think he's undercover, he's wearing maybe a Nazi uniform and they. Maybe they, he's a Nazi. <laughs> maybe he's a Nazi. <laughs> Sorry, go on. Uh, I was gonna. Uh, I don't remember that. I don't remember <laughs> any of the stuff they did. Anyway, um, but and they take and he's been, you know, he's been captured. And they take the bag of his head, and I think many people had the thought: is this just a, still, yeah. is this just a moment from Last Crusade or yeah. something like that? You know, yes, it, it looks so good. Would well, you don't remember though? Do you? No, I don't remember. Yes. <laughs> uh, look, I, I will say, look, I get why people are skeptical. Because of Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, because mm-hmm. of the thing, some of the things that have happened with Star Wars, I get why people look at this and they see the floating head on the horse and go, I hate this. Uh-huh. But I reserve the right to go into this with absolute blind optimism, Absolutely, Mason. Absolutely, yes. And that is what I'm going to yes. do. Yes. <laughs> it's James Mangold. I like a lot of what I see with this. Yeah. I, I hope I, I – I could be wrong. Yes. But I, I, I enjoyed this. Yeah. I enjoyed seeing this. Um, it felt like like Temple of Doom. Not yeah. Temple of Doom, um – Last Crusade. It had that kind of yeah, vibe yeah. to me. And yeah. of course, we're getting the return of John Rhys Davies. Yep. Uh, Playing Egyptian man. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, great cast. Boyd Holbrook. Yeah. Looking good. Yeah, absolutely. I, what do you think about the bit where he uses the whip and then everyone shoots him and he ducks under the table? Just shoot under the table where he is. Right. He's just under the table. Uh, silly, I, Mason. It was a These are serious sober. movies and that's silly. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Mm. Like it wasn't entirely a one to one callback, again, you know, towards the scene where. Yeah, he shoots the guy, which I don't remember, but <laughs> or maybe it was though because I don't remember. <laughs> okay. I don't remember, but it was in that same kind of 
Yeah. It had that same kind of vibe and feel to it. Yeah, absolutely. You know? God, he's moving about though, isn't he? It sure is. But when it is him, I, I can't tell. Yeah. For the most part. Mm. Great. Should we move it along? Let's move it along. Yay. Huge tech companies, yuck, by the way, in America pay next to nothing in taxes, meaning they barely give anything back in the society that made them rich. They may not be doing a lot of giving, but they sure are doing a lot of taking. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about how these tech companies enrich themselves by taking your personal data. They grab your web history. They grab your email metadata, plus video searches to create a detailed profile on you and then sell it off to the highest bidder. Companies aren't just selling products anymore. They are selling you. You have become the product. To protect your identity and data from those tech giants, we recommend, me and Mason, we're both here. Uh, He's not talking, but we're both here. We recommend ExpressVPN every time you go online. I mean, think about the websites you visit. Facebook, Twitter, Google. Everything you do and say online is tracked by these giant corporations. Using your public IP address, they can uniquely match your activity and know your location. ExpressVPN makes you anonymous online by camouflaging your IP address and replacing it with a different, secure IP of your choice. ExpressVPN also encrypts all your data so that it's protected from hackers and anyone else trying to spy on you. And what I like most about ExpressVPN is how easy it is to use. Just download the app on your phone or computer, tap one button, and you are protected. So, if you're like me and believe your internet data belongs to you and not to greedy corporations, then ExpressVPN is the answer. Protect your data with the number one rated VPN provider today. Visit expressvpn.com slash weeklyplanet to get three months free on a one-year package. That's expressvpn.com slash weeklyplanet. Expressvpn.com slash weeklyplanet to learn more about ExpressVPN. Okay. We were going to move on. We were going to move on. But let's true. not move on. Because here's one bit of news. Wow. This is from the British Film Institute. Mm. So you know it's legit. The BFG. G. The BFG. Yeah. The re- uh, revealed the results of the 2022 Sight and Sound Greatest Films of All Time poll. Boo. So there's two polls. There's critics and there's filmmakers. Wow. What do you think I would film, fit, fit on that? Because I'm critics. a Critics. <laughs> You're a critic is what you are. I'm a creative. That's right. <laughs> Mm. Go on. Okay. So do you can you guess the number one this year? So it's it's all the critics they they, they think Is it about. just this year? No, it's of all time. So it's the best films of all time. Fuck. You you'll never guess it. So it's I've not been, like Shawshank or something, because that no. would be the general audience no. one, I assume. Here's the here's the list. <clears throat> Go on. Uh is the critics' top twenty greatest film films of all time. So every year they 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 have a thing. Every critic all the critics on their BFI list. Have a have a think about it, and they 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 reorder their their list. I think they all give a top ten, wow. and then it's turned into a top twenty. Wow! So here's the top number one top film of all time. It's called Jean Dielman Twenty Three Kai du Commerce Ten Eighty Bruxelles, I... directed by Chantal Ackerman Nineteen Seventy Five. I've looked it up for you, James. Fucking kill me, and Mason. also myself. <laughs> you don't remember that? No, I don't remember that. <laughs> A lonely widow turns to prostitution to make ends meet for herself and her son, but things change when she kills one of her clients with a pair of scissors. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds great, Is this right? part of like an expanded universe of interconnected movies? Yeah, these are all linked. <laughs> these are all actually linked. Uh, the next one's Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo. Okay. It's obviously the reveal in the in, in Jean Dielman's movie. Like she was affected by Vertigo. That's yeah, why yeah she, I remember. So she's... Like she was at a place called right, Vertigo. Right. She was said, yeah, 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 yeah. So you would think, of course, that you know she think a lot of things. She's in a she's in a tough spot, and this has happened, and, and you know she she you know she becomes a murderer, and that's a whole you know it's a whole thing. But actually, it wasn't her fault at all. Yeah, because that would imply she's a flawed character, and she's not. We can't have that. I don't think so. so. It's just it was actually just the Vertigo mm. that did that. Okay, from Count Vertigo. <gasps> Wait, no, because number three is Citizen Kane. Because of Citizen Kane. Citizen Kane caused the vertigo. The sled hitter. Well, yeah, the sled hitter. But then obviously he became a newspaper magnate. Is that a spoiler to say a sled hit somebody? Yes. (laughs) Oh, no. Yes. But anyway, and and then Citizen Kane activated the signal across the world that caused the vertigo. Yeah. Which caused this woman to do a murder. All right, number four, Tokyo Story. Tokyo Drift, yeah, good one. Uh, number five, Wong Kar Wai's In the Mood for Love. Okay. Number six, 2001, A Space Odyssey. Yep. Number seven, Beau Travail. I've I'm I've heard of it. I don't know what it Where's is. Where's the Dark Knight on this list, Mason? Well, maybe it's towards the end. <laughs> Number eight, Mulholland Drive. Okay. David Lynch. Number nine, Man with a Movie Camera. Number ten, Singing in the Rain. 
Number 11, Sunrise, A Song of Two Humans. Number 12, The Godfather. Oh, Godfather. Number 13. Godfather 2. La Regale de Boo, Jou. skip that, skip that, skip it. <laughs> 14, Cleo from 5 to 7. Mm-hmm. Number 15, John Ford's The Searchers. I've heard of that one. Yep. <laughs> no, I've seen The Searchers, actually. Uh, number 16, Meshes of the Afternoon. Mm-hmm. Number 17, Close Up by Abbas Kiarostami. Number 18, Persona by Ingmar Bergman. Number 19, Apocalypse Now. Number 27, Samurai. These are terrific movies. They are terrific, aren't they? And they're all good. And we yeah. are profoundly out of touch from, from what... Uh, These are all just movies before 1979. Except for Mulholland Drive. Oh, yeah, that's true, actually. Good point. I think, yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. Well, I only like movies from the past 12 years. Okay, great. And movies I saw when I was a kid. Okay, Everything great. else can go in the bin, Mason. Mm. Yeah. You're right. You know? Okay, I probably like the movie Willow. When I saw it, I saw it as a kid. I don't, yeah, right, I don't right. remember it though, to be honest. Mm. I should watch it again because I do want to watch that series. What was the number one of normal people? Of normal people? Yeah. Let's have a look. Well, well there isn't really a normal people one, but there is the, the filmmakers one. Oh, okay. Let me just okay, here we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Director's 100 greatest films of all time. Yes, we're doing all 100. I don't want to do that. Just kidding. You know, I don't have it here. Well, that's not important. Okay. What is important that we move yes. on to this segment of the show, Mason. That's right. It's called, we saw the movie Glass Onion, A Knives Out Story. That's right. I'll tell you what, uh, Netflix probably left a lot of money in the table dragging this from cinemas, kicking and screaming. Mm. So Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery, had a budget of $40 million. It made $13 million at the box office. Mm. But Netflix paid $469 million for this movie and its sequel. That's way more. You'd think yes. that you would leave this in cinemas. They must have calculated and thought that more people will sign up for Netflix if they kept it in this small window, right? Because otherwise mm. this is a terrible move to make. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, th- they're famous for terrible moves, aren't they, Netflix? Well, that is true. Yeah. So, yeah, at the moment it's not a box office hit, but it's nobody's fault but yours. A what? Uh, the audience goal was for not going. I went to the movies. Yeah, I meant yours as in the general audience listening oh, to this. Sure, sure. Uh, what do you think the story was? Oh, come on, mate. Yeah. All right, so Benoit Blanc from the previous movie. I've seen him. He's in between cases. Why? It's, it's big time pandemic time because he doesn't have a case. <gasps> yeah, he didn't have one. But, but he's, all, he's all sad and he's spending a lot of time in the bath. Uh, playing Among Us with uh, various celebrity friends who I shan't be naming. Let's not until spoilers. do that. Uh, but then a mysterious arrival at his door. And he's like, what's this? A new case? Probably. Yep. Better solve the case. Again, we're going to be doing non-spoilers and then spoilers. Uh-huh. Uh, but I would say, again, I didn't want to know anything going into this. I looked at the trailer and then didn't, mm. look, didn't look at it again. So I would say same for you. Mm. I would also bear in mind also if you maybe heard – what happens in this or what it's about. I think like with the first movie, it's not necessarily about who did it that's interesting. James said correctly. Who done it. Thank you. It's it's more the un- done it. it's the unraveling of it which is interesting <laughs> and the yeah. interplay between the characters. Yes. That makes it that makes it interesting. It's the skewering of certain yeah. Character archetypes. Because I think it avoids falling into the trap of a lot of mysteries where it gets to the end and they go, this person did it. And you go, oh, mm. I don't like that. Whereas this. In fact, I would say there is a there's a fun little, quite early on in the movie, there's a kind of a fun, mm. uh, what would you call it? A skewering of, yeah. that, of that trope of like. There's a literal skewering. There is a skewering. They line up the entire cast and run them through with a jousting stick. And what a cast. <laughs> what a, Maybe one of the finest casts ever to be. Put in a I line mean, and stab with a jousting stick. I was thinking about how many of these I could fit onto a jousting stick, like yeah. a big uh, shish kebab. Mm. But no, I I can't decide. I think I I think the first cast might be better. Right, interesting. But I I don't know. Look, I the thing about this cast, I think though, is this, I'm, I mean, I don't know. Is that is that even true? I don't know. Anyway, Janelle Monae, yes. Edward Norton, Catherine Hunt. Dave Batista, mm. other people, Mason. Other people. Yeah, surprise cameos, et cetera. Yeah. People who turn up and you think, oh, they're going to be in it, and then they're not in it again. That's Inc- true. I saw a critique of that on Twitter. Somebody was like, uh, excuse me, how could you get, get this guy in and he, he's just there for a second and he's gone? And it's like, why wouldn't you? you care? If you can get this very famous, you know. Tom Cruise. If you can get the very famous Tom If you get this particular very famous Tom Cruise. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Why yeah. wouldn't you exactly? Yeah. yeah. No, but that, but that, all that being said, mm-hmm. yeah, you're right. What an absolute cast and, and great interplay between them. Just an awful set of human beings like it was for the first movie. Mm. Uh, and I think that worked well. I also think it did well not to retread the same formula as the 
previous movie. Yes, exactly. Like I couldn't yeah. even say between this and the first one which is better. Mm. I mean, I think maybe I went into the first one like knowing less about how Ryan Johnson would approach a mystery. Mm-hmm. So the surprise element of that I think probably worked a bit better. But as a mystery in itself, I think this is – this is very well yeah. structured. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about you? I also agree with that. Wow. We both said the same thing just then, <laughs> didn't we? But again, I was going to say about the cast, it's not that they are all the most – like it's not about having them being the most A-list cast in the no, world. No, Although obviously we've got Daniel Craig. Yeah. Um, he was in the first movie. And Ed Norton, obviously. He was in the first movie. He was in the first movie. Yeah. But, yeah, just just sort of very, very good character actors, I think. we, You know – Catherine Hahn is in this. Mm. Kate Hudson, who I haven't seen in a movie in years, yeah. but uh, puts in a very good performance as kind That's of terrible, a. That's uh, terrible because she's a big fan of yours and you've been ignoring her work. Yeah, on purpose. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's a power play, you just don't like yeah, her. Yeah, just a lot of negging in yeah. a power play. And you don't like her? Yeah, that also. <laughs> Those things. <laughs> you didn't like the movie Fool's Gold with Matthew McConaughey? Of course I like the, the movie. most famous movie that they did together. No, it's not even the most famous <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, she's got a long-suffering assistant played by Jessica Hennick. I thought was doing, doing very great, well. Yeah. Great. Uh, mm. Dave Bautista is sort of a, a a Twitch streamer, YouTube guy. Who's, MR, he, um, he's, he's sort of leaning MRA, into MRA yeah, dude, yeah. with, a, with a, a girlfriend called Whiskey. Yep. Very good. Mm. Just very good. Yeah, I completely agree. I think also one of the things this movie does very well is display the excess of wealth mm-hmm. and also the kind of the stupidity of these levels of wealth and the things that you can afford and achieve, mm-hmm. but also, like, why would you do this? Yes. Like, so, it's because yeah. it's like, this is a, yeah. this is a silly so, thing. So Blanc done. and all the other uh, characters have been brought to Ed Norton's Island. Yeah. Uh, where he has a, he has a, he's, he's, he's carefully cultivated or, he, or he's had someone create a, I think, I think an actual famous mystery author, like a real one. Yeah. Uh, create a, a, a whodunit. He's going to be killed. Who did it? And, uh, well. Mm. And they they they're all they've all been brought together because they are they are they were a, a, a former friend group yeah uh, who sort of came up together and he became super rich mm. uh, in the in a in a vague tech sense yes and uh, and he's 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 built a, a giant glass onion on his island yeah which is uh is a callback to the the glass onion bar where they all yeah sort of hung out together as as yeah. young bucks you know he's uh Ed, Ed Norton's become this insanely rich tech yeah. billionaire. Uh, despite maybe not being the smartest guy in the room, mm. and uh, yeah, he's he's just built this life of excess, and all these people sort of glom on. They and... glom on. Well, they, they or have to. They have least. to. Yeah, yeah. They, they they all started out as friends, but this guy became you know the the richest one, and they're all sort of they're all of course sort of beholden to them for various favors and uh, yeah. their 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 respective careers and their success. But of course, uh, they, they all have a reason to kill him. That's right. Mm. And why not? things don't go uh, exactly as you would suspect. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it is without, you know, again, getting to spoilers, it is like unconventionally structured. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it, it twists and turns in ways that I cannot get into mm-hmm. here. What did you think of the outfits, though? Loved them. Yeah? Yeah. On everybody? Yes. Janelle Monáe's outfit's fabulous. Agreed. Catherine Hahn is all in beige all the time. I agree. Uh, Dave yeah. Batista's little little undies with his guns Yeah, yeah and he's wearing his Versace shirts to <laughs> prove his manliness or what have you. Yeah. Uh, Jessica Hennick looks like a very, uh, you know, harried uh, assistant yeah, with yeah. a bucket hat. That's a, that's a trend. <laughs> it's happening in the White Lotus as well. Boy, is bucket it. Bucket-hatted assistant. Yeah. Um, who else is in this movie? What about Benoit Blanc himself, oh, Mason? Oh, my goodness, James. Yeah. Trousers a little too wide for my taste. But too wide or too white? Too wide. Oh, but that's, no, look, that's the structure no, of that's his true. body. A lot, yeah, no, it's true. Look, uh, I, I, I think it was great. Mm. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of people pointed out like a stylistic shift. But here's the thing: he's a hashtag menswear guy. Yeah, and yeah, and a menswear guy has very distinct seasonal wardrobes. Yeah, exactly. That's what mm. I figured. Yeah, yeah. And you know, he wears a shirt in, to swim. <laughs> he does wear Do you a think shirt that's because swim. he's ripped or because he's not ripped? Oh. Because Daniel Craig can never go shirtless again for the rest of no, his that's life true. If, he's, if he's not ripped. I would suggest Blanc is not ripped. Okay. A lot of people... We see him in the bath and he's not, not, not ripped. No, that's true, yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say he's fit for his age. Yeah. That would be my guess. Of, of Benoit Blanc, not Daniel Craig. Who is also um, fit for his age. Also, a lot of people are like... I don't think there's a spoiler, but Benoit Blanc is gay. In the, yeah, in the, that's been... And a lot of people are like, oh, you, you, they turn him gay in between movies. There's a scene in Knives Out where he's in the car by himself and he's listening to Stephen Sondheim <laughs> lyrics and he's singing along. And I'm like, no, he was gay. He was gay. He was gay in the first yeah. movie too, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Also, it's not like it doesn't factor into anything. It's just no, it's like true. a small part of the, his life that, that just kind of happens, mm. you know, in a scene. Yeah. yeah. 
What would you say? Anyway, James, he's wearing a lovely what I, what, what seems to be a sort of 1920s kind, of, kind yeah. of reminiscent safari suit for most of this movie, and I thought it was delightful. I mean, he wore something to an island. It seems yeah. island appropriate. He's yeah. not going to wear his cravats and his blazers or whatever he wore in the last one. He's wearing his neckerchiefs, obviously, James. I, I'm... He didn't wear any cravats in the previous movie. This is I mean, not... I don't remember. I don't remember. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't remember me on this. All right, I do remember. Not after this 15-minute segment we're yeah, doing. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. All Benoit Blanc's little outfits the segment. Pocket squares? No, not in this one. In the first one. Yes. Thank you. Yes. It just seemed country attire appropriate in the first one. Mm, Boat shoes? No. Slip-ons? No. Crocs? Yes. Blazer socks? Crocs and blazer socks, yes. Great. That's exactly right, yes. Cool, cool. Anyway, uh, compared to the first, which is better? I think they're of equal quality. But is it best movie ever? Yes. I agree it is, Mason. Mm. I had a good time with this. And uh, if you can catch it in cinemas, which you can't, you should, which you can't I mean, it was interesting because I – Maybe they'll give it another run. They Apparently they were like, no, and then they're like, we're considering it. They should. But I I wonder – I think the maybe the the, the end result was they're like, okay, when it's on Netflix, we'll do a theatrical run. Why? Why? Right? I wouldn't go to the theater. You've still got like three weeks. Why? Yeah. But I mean, I, that might be a case of. Put it counter to Avatar. Right? You know, you go to the movies and you're like, I don't want to see Avatar. I'll see anything else yeah, or that. Exactly. Obviously. Because I, I think what most likely happened is they put it out for a week in cinemas and it did quite well mm. for, a, for a, you know, a, a, a mid budget movie. A mid budget non Marvel movie. And then they said, well, maybe we should book some more cinemas, mm. but they couldn't. Because everything Maybe, was yeah. booked out. You might so be right. They made up this malarkey it wasn't, that we're not interested. It wasn't at Hoyt Cinemas in Australia. There's like two major chains. Uh-huh. Well, there's more than that. But, you know, there's in Victoria at least it's Hoyt's and um, – Village. Village. And it wasn't at Hoyt's. And mm. I wonder if that was a distribution thing as well. Or, Maybe. I don't know what's going on. Maybe Ryan Johnson – Shut up, Lenovo <laughs> tablet computer. Maybe Ryan Johnson burned all his bridges with the head of Hoyt's Cinemas. No way. Yeah, maybe maybe the maybe the head of village. Jeanette Hoyt's. Maybe the maybe the uh maybe the founder of, of Village Cinemas loves The Last Jedi and Hoyt's thinks it sucks. Maybe you might be right. Yeah, that's I right. mean that's how things go, isn't it? Mm. Anyway, spoilers. Okay, let's go into spoilers. There's time codes if you do want to jump ahead. Bearing in mind if you're listening at bigsandwich.co that those would be accurate, but if you're listening anywhere else, there might be an ad in here that throw them off. So just we'll, so you we'll, know. We'll uh we will not say who done it immediately. No. But I will say if I'm first spoilers. This is who did it. Oh, no. no. Sorry, go on. The, the, my, my, I, I love, speaking of Sondheim, I love that four of uh, Benoit Blanc's little friends, Sondheim. Yep. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yes. He's a big uh, Arthur Conan Doyle fan, which is, I guess, why he's I didn't there. know that. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's, I believe he's even written like Sherlock Holmes. Really? Stories. Yeah. I knew he was like a smart, like academic. Yeah, kid, yeah, but I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. He's, uh, I, 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 if, if memory serves, he's in some sort of, Arthur Conan Doyle society where you no way. talk about Sherlock Holmes a lot. Uh, Natasha Leone, yep. obviously, who was in whatever it is. That <laughs> show, Russian Doll. And yes, whatever. that's true. But she is. You know, isn't she doing a detective something? She is, yeah. yeah. And a lot of people have always said, well, she should be a, a Columbo. Yeah. When they do a new Columbo, she should be the Columbo. Mm. And of course, Angela Lansbury, who was her, her last final appearance. Her final, final appearance, yeah. Yeah. A very, a very minor role. Yes. Playing Among Us. Yes. A game I've never played. Who do you think would be best at Among Us of those people? Benoit Blanc, probably, if he was real. Because <laughs> he's because he's the world's greatest detective and yeah. they're all merely actors and but or, he's got that, uh, musical uh, writer and directors. He's got that Benedict Cumberbatch, Cumberbatch Sherlock TV thing of like he can't do anything that's not like incredibly complicated and sure yeah yeah because yeah. it's boring uh-huh. and simple yeah. that he doesn't he doesn't I mean I know. think it is a little different to that in that I don't know I he's I, in the bath he's in the bath exactly yeah. I don't know I think Cumberbatch's Sherlock is more just he is I, I I believe Sherlock's whole thing is if he pushes stuff out of his brain that he doesn't need and oh, then, okay. then it's yeah, useless yeah. to him but I think Blanc is more like I don't like doing the yeah I don't like doing the footwork. So I won't. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of other cameos, we had Hugh Grant as his husband slash partner. Mm-hmm. We had Serena Williams. I really enjoyed that cameo because you think it's just a, <laughs> a picture of Serena and Williams, Williams on the wall, and then she's like, I'm, "You're paying for the session." You want? <laughs> uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt plays Miles Clock, which mm. is the gong sound. Yes, that's right. And Ethan Hawke is the very minor cameo. I'm assuming people were upset about. Mm, yeah. Where he gives yeah. them the COVID spray that. Presumably cures them or whatever. How do you feel about the fact that it was set in COVID times? I mean, we're in COVID times now, obviously. Sure, yeah. But that it was set nah, sort of me. at the height of the pandemic. Yeah. Prior, I think, to the vaccine being being developed. Must have been, yeah. But there's just a scene where Ethan Hawke sprays them all in the mouth yeah. with 
something. It yeah. might be a vaccine, it might not. I think maybe it was like it was done because it's a, a story device to keep him bored. Mm. And then so he had something, you know, and then also there's jokes that come from that. You see like Kate Hudson's got like the mesh. She mask. does. Kate Hudson as yeah. this kind of airheaded influencer. Yeah. Everybody else is wearing a mask, but she's wearing the useless mesh mask, which real celebrities yeah, had for a also bit. Some did, of them, yeah. Yeah. Well, some people say masks are useless in general, Mason. Oh, yeah, go on. <laughs> no, I see, I see both okay. sides. But, uh, yeah, but I, I think also that joke of, like, rich people have a different a different idea of, like, uh, or different standards when it comes to these things. Like, not only do you get, like, they have a magical cure that maybe nobody else has, mm. but also that the rules don't apply. Yeah, when we, when we see the gathering of the characters, Kate Hudson is just at a party. Yeah. Nobody seems to care at all. No, exactly. You know. I thought I thought what what this movie did did really well is that just show, and we talked about it, just the excess and stupidity and the just sheer luck involved in wealth. Mm. And I know people have said, wow, this is very timely, isn't it? Because Edward Norton is transparently Elon Musk. Yes. And I know a lot of people have said like, oh, wow, how did he predict this or whatever? But like people people knew this about Elon Musk like prior mm. to just like a, a month ago. And tech bros in general, I think. Yeah, yeah. exactly. There is this mm. idea of like they, you know, they're built off the back of other people's work and they throw a thousand ideas at the wall and – somebody makes one of them for them, which works. Uh But just like he is so transparently stupid and I love the idea of like he built a a literal glass onion because he went to a bar called Glass Onion. So he went, I'll build a real glass onion. Like Mm -hmm. even that in itself is like that's a bad idea and why did you do that? Yeah. I also loved – I didn't mention this in in, in non-spoilers in in our famous Mesa Talks about the outfit section. Yeah. We do see him in flashback at one point and he's wearing Tom Cruise's outfit from from Magnolia. Like Amazing. Down to, down to the hair, My which is that God. weird, like, that weird part, uh, slick, <laughs> slicked in the middle and wide on the sides look. I and the just, leather vest. Just amazing. Because I think Ryan, Ryan Johnson, I believe, has said of Ed Norton's character, he's never had an original idea in his life. Exactly. I mean, you see him later dressed exactly like Steve Jobs, and mm. that is less interesting. Yes. But the fucking Magnolia callback is just... <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we, we haven't really gotten to even the meat of the 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 mystery. So yeah, uh, all these friend, like as we said, all these people used to be friends. They hung out at this bar, but then spoilers. Here's the big. Here's the number one big. Get spoiler. ready. Here's the number one big spoiler: is that uh, Ed Norton became wildly successful because he stole an idea from yep. one of Janelle Monae's characters. Yes, uh, and she's plays twins. She's plays twins. Uh, but then. She's going to she's going to prove that the idea that he stole was actually hers initially. Yes. Her sister is. Yes. No, so she was. But then he murders her <laughs> yes. in a very transparently obvious way. And then so his sister goes to the island to investigate him with Benoit Blanc, and she's the one who went to find him. Yes. And he get involved him. So even though you think initially that he was invited, he's he wasn't invited and he was he's there on purpose to solve mm. a mystery and also at the start when he gets there and he's all like bumbling and whatever and he's like kind of seems overwhelmed initially i'm like what is this daniel craig performance what is happening and then you know you quickly realize that oh no he's doing a performance Benoit Blanc is doing a performance and he's not a good actor yes exactly <laughs> but right, they're yeah. all so vapid and stupid they don't realize that like that he that they think he's overwhelmed and whatever yeah. by all of this, where, where really he's just like he's whatever by yeah by all and, of it. And there's the moment you know, we talked about how you know uh, Edward Norton set up this this elaborate murder mystery mm. and then Blanc just solves it straight away. Like yeah. you know it doesn't it it didn't it didn't come down to we get through the entire movie and then we're all in the room and he says and actually the the killer is this person or what have you like he, he they've, they've Ryan Johnson has thrown that whole thing out and been like yeah well obviously if you look at the angles yeah. This you, is you and this and this and this and this and this. And I love that, you know, Ben Blanc when he figures out that, like, if you look at it and it's all there, everything that every idea or thought that he has in this movie, it's something that he's got somebody else to do. Like the puzzle boxes, the the, the mystery in itself, mm-hmm. or like even the because so even the murder that he does because he kills Dave Batista during this mm. is just hap- by happenstance because he you know happens to know this thing about him, but also. Shutting off the lights is Benoit Blanc's idea mm. to shut off the lights and then murder somebody. And I just I love the way that you can just see it all. And did you notice that? Because you know, there's a bit where he hands 
Dave Batista the glass. Uh-huh. Did you notice the first time that he handed him the glass? Because I did. Can't remember. Oh, okay. That's of right. course you can't remember, yeah. Mason. <laughs> That's right. But I, I remember when they showed it again, I was like, I second guessed myself. I went, mm. I thought that I saw him hand him the glass, like make him the drink and there give it to it him. And, they, and, they, and then I, I doubted myself and then mm. it turns out I should have backed myself, that Mason. You should have backed yourself. Now, how do you feel about uh, the idea that because at a certain point – uh, Janelle Monae's second character, so the 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 character that didn't initially associate with this group, yeah. she's gone to the island to figure out who killed her sister mm. uh, and then we see her shot and we assume she's dead but she has in fact survived. She's actually been, she's she's been, shot, she's been shot in a little notebook. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I mean, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's the same with like she does a little rampage at the end and uses a super fuel to blow up the whatever yeah, uh-huh. and the Mona Lisa. Mm. Like it's... It's excessive and it's silly. Yeah, but all, and also in the in the previous Knives Out, Anna de Armas survives because the it's knife, a fake knife, the knife that Chris. Evans? Maybe people haven't seen Knives well, Out. I mean, if they if they yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that'd yeah. be wild, wouldn't it? Yeah, um, it, it's a it's a fake knife. It's yeah. one of those retractable blade ones. I some very strange callbacks. Whose hot sauce was it? Jared Leto. No, it was Jared Leto's oh, kombucha. And it was Jeremy Renner's hot Jeremy sauce. Jeremy Renner's hot sauce, yes. Yeah. Why well, don't know, but I love it. Is he known <laughs> for being hot and spicy? Probably. I don't know. I reckon you look at Jeremy, Jeremy Renner and you go, hot, hot, hot he stuff. He had social media, didn't he? He had that social media app of he his. Did, that's true. Yeah. I also, um, I loved how in this that it just points out, and I think this is true of like even most people's existence, and I include myself in this, your existence in itself and your success or failure often is just pure luck. Mm. Like I think like me and you doing this right now, so much of this is just happenstance. I mean, I don't remember much of our past. But. <laughs> sure, but just the idea that we grew up in a particular era, era watching certain movies and reading certain comic books and then, you know, starting a YouTube channel or whatever at a certain time and getting in on podcasts at a certain time and all of these things, I think it is – it is it is mostly luck that we are doing this. Mm. And I think if you think about that too much, especially if you have a billion dollars. That, <laughs> Which we you, do. As you've talked about. Like, as I do. It, it would rot your brain, right, mm. to think that, like, maybe I'm an idiot and this is <laughs> luck. Yeah. Which is what this movie is. It's just like, hey, an idiot can have money. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is a thing. I was going to do a video on this, but I, I probably won't, so I'll just talk about it here. Okay. In the first, If not- we do real good at the talking about it, sure. though, we can just turn it into a video probably. True. In the first Knives Out, uh, you can uh, – Ryan Johnson did an interview where he said you can't give a bad guy an iPhone. So that was something I was looking for in this movie. Right, okay. And all of the – Due think- to some sort of Apple's uh, – Yeah. They, they, want to, they want to keep up appearances. They don't want the, the bad guys yes. having an Apple. So Chris Evans doesn't have an iPhone in that movie. Okay. In this movie – you, the phones that you see, I think for the most part, are Samsungs. Okay. Benoit Blanc gets handed an iPad at one point, but he's the good guy. <laughs> right. And Edward Norton, who was the main villain, doesn't have a phone. So I was like, <laughs> oh, I don't, I can't predict this based on phones. Okay, sure. Because he's even structured this story in a way where if you remember that interview, which I do and you don't, mm-hmm. then I, I would have... I could have maybe puzzled it out earlier. Yeah. But they go out of their way to be like, he doesn't have a phone and he only faxes. That's true. And I just thought that was very clever. Wow. Well, now you're going to go into the next one, looking out desperately for fax machines <laughs> right. to determine who the murderer is. Oh, I love that moment where Benoit Blanc is like, thought I'd win an, I- an iPad. Yeah. Like, can I? And Norton's like, I guess we could get you an iPad. I, yeah. don't, I don't know. Yeah. I like that too. Yeah. Um, I think it's worth seeing, even if you've listened to this far. But uh, sure, yeah. But you, you, you know, you should, you probably shouldn't have. But some of those ones you probably want to go in blind into. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But maybe if you were, you know, maybe if you were like, I don't know about this genre. I don't. I'm not interested. What have you? You know. Maybe we gave you a little push. Maybe get interested. Get interested. Get among it. Yeah. Get among us. Go hard or go home. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Mason. Anything else or should That's we move it along? We should move it along. I agree. Let's do it now. To our next segment of the show, Collings will put in the theme song because I don't know if you remember this, Mason, but I, I smashed my laptop. I don't, I don't remember that. And now I'm on this thing. <laughs> you know what? It's more like a lap drop. It's just a That's good, little Mason. joke that I've come up with there. I like the way that you your brain is just Swiss cheese. <laughs> Let's go. I'm doing the theme. Westworld. Wow. Mason, what are you reading? This is the segment where we tell each other what we've been reading and looking at. Here's a great one for you, James. 
I'll so my friend Jack Drews, comedian Jack Drews. Love Druce, Jack Drews. Who I've mentioned in the past. Love his awkward boyfriend video that he did recently. Right? Yeah. Well, he's got a, he puts a bunch of sketches up on YouTube. Just just, just puts them up there. Why just, don't each just, of them have a million views? It's a great question. Yeah. But uh, earlier in the year, he did a live stand-up special, mm. uh, which I went to and had a great time. It's now up on his YouTube. Is it? It's called Rat Paradise. Okay. And I watched it and it's good fun. Have you watched it again? Yes. Double times. Double times, yeah. Because you didn't remember it, I assume. I absolutely didn't remember it. Because it was bad. Yes. <laughs> no. Good. Good. But you good. do remember it the second time you yes. watched it. Okay, yeah. great. Anyway, yeah. a lot of fun. People should check that out, I, will, I think. Yeah. Now this is a this is a plug because he did message me and say, Can you can you plug this? But well, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do it, it now. I don't <laughs> want to do it now. They, <laughs> he asked us to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are all natural. Mm. How much does he give us money? Thousand dollars. That's Th- fine. Thousands right. of dollars. <laughs> thousands of dollars. No, he's great. Follow him on Twitter also. Really yeah. good stuff. That's good mm. stuff, James, Mason. What have you been reading and or watching? Well, Mason, I was going to get the Callisto protocol this week. But which apparently is dead, it's really it's bad. bad and whatever. Oh, not even bad. Apparently okay. it's like it's fine as a single player campaign and some of the mechanics are whatever. But you know, all in all, you know, it's like dead space sort of and whatever. But also, they didn't finish it. So it's like, hey, I'm I'm not buying a fucking game you didn't finish. When you say it's not finished, like it's buggy on PC, right? And whatever. And this is a cyberpunk. Yeah, and there's some extra situation. stuff and whatever that you. I don't know about the PlayStation's versions or whatever, but like I'll buy it in a year when it's when I can get it for twelve dollars in the entire thing, right? If they fix a bunch of shit. When it's the game of the year. I edition. wanted this to be like a good thing, you know. Right. And what am I going to get? The Dead Space remake by EA or whatever? I don't want to fucking buy that either. <laughs> God damn it, Mason. James, you have strong feelings about computer games. I don't disagree with you. When scientists invented going on the computer. What did they say? Can you imagine they thought of a time when people would be mad about that? Yes. Huh. Yeah. Wow. I dropped my computer this week, Mason. I know you did. (laughs) Oh, you know that? Well, I can see your computer here and I've surmised. (laughs) I can see your new lap situation this it's a lenovo thing. laptop think pad pad thing. thing it's sort of a tablet but it's got a keyboard and a... it's got a weird kickstand yeah, yeah, at the yeah, back yeah, yeah, yeah. doesn't have the, the appropriate ports i need so i need converters so i've to... learned from the great detective benoit blanc through 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 deduction i've yeah. learned that perhaps you've dropped your laptop and perhaps you could call that a lap drop yeah that's good i, I could do that yeah, yeah. yeah. i'm also gonna watch because i remember here's the thing i remember reading this book Years and years ago, you remember but this, I do don't remember precisely. I don't remember. I don't remember anything about it. I remember it had some fun twists and turns. But there's a TV series on Disney Plus called Fleischman is in Trouble. Oh yeah, I've seen that. Which is I haven't of, seen it, but I've seen. The yeah, thing. it's a sort of it's sort of a relationship drama, comedy drama, but apparently it goes in some odd places. Yeah. But here's the thing: I can't remember specifically how. There mm. was a period a few years ago where there were a bunch of novels that all had this sort of. They were they were quirky relationship dramas, but then there was time travel or something, you know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I don't remember which one it is, Ooh. but I am going to watch because it's got Claire Danes and Jesse Eisenberg and Lizzie Kaplan, Adam Good Brody, Josh Radner, etc. Just a tremendous cast. So I'm going to check that out. I think that maybe should. I'll watch that too. Is it getting bold and brave reviews? I think it's getting pretty good reviews. Okay, I'm gonna, look. I'm going to I'm going to tell you precisely. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes says 85. Mm. percent and a four out of five review on Vulture. Four out of five? That's only 80%, though. That's only 80%. Oh, well, that's an A, right? An A. A yeah. low A, maybe. It's a low A, it's true. The lowest A you can get. That's yes, absolutely. Towards an A minus, as far great. as I'm concerned. Yeah. So what are you watching or reading instead well, of? Well, Mason, I actually read one of the volumes of Tom Kane's Batman run, volume eight, called Batman Cold Case. Tom King? Tom King, yes. Okay. I said, yeah, you're right. I've actually even written Tom King here, but I said it wrong. Nice. Thank you for remembering. Uh, Mason, and it's about Batman beats up Mr. Freeze for doing murders. Okay. And then he goes. Seems fairly standard so far. Yeah, he had a great time. But then he's like, shit, I might have been wrong. So he, as Bruce Wayne, he gets on the jury in the hopes to clear up what really happened and persuade some jury. So to so extrajudicial violence. Yep. And then he's tampering with the jury pool. Yep. And then he's, he's going to interfere. No, I know. He's rich, I'm Mason. Typical, he's allowed to. It's typical. He yeah. should do it. I think he should because he knows better. <laughs> yeah. That's how he got rich. He's incredible, innovative genius, and also his parents were already rich. <laughs> They're already so rich. They're already the richest people in Gotham. <laughs> I agree. But then through some hard work and some elbow, elbow grease, he became slightly richer. I thought you were going to say in some algorithms. But some yes, algorithms also. Definitely. So I read that. I know people are kind of mixed on his run. but uh, And everybody left Gotham because of the incredible crime and the vigilantism and all the violence. So he bought up all the property really cheap. I think that's great. And then he resells it and he's a landlord. I agree. He's a good guy. And he's rich. Mm. Uh, so I know people are mixed on Tom King's run, but... Um, 
That, that was a good. I enjoyed that okay. story. So. Was that like a one one it's issue like mark? Three or four issues. Oh, I can't fun. remember. But anyway, okay. I, just, I just bought it. I bought it and I read it. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Love it. Should we move to the next segment? Of yeah, it's the got show? letters. You wish. We do letters. I yeah. do wish, and it is. Play it. Play it, Mason. Fade him. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm experimenting with a fade. In. It's not in the volume right of my phone is there. Okay, well, look, because that would have been embarrassing. Uh, so a few people have mentioned this, and I meant to mention this last week, and this I forgot. This week is an embarrassment of embarrassments <laughs> for the both of us, I <laughs> this think. Is, this is the letter segment of the show. If you do want to reach the show, by the way, hashtag weeklyplanetpod on Twitter or weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. Um, yeah, established titles. I don't know if you've heard, heard, this, heard of this, mate. And I've done a couple of sponsors. I did one two weeks back, maybe. I haven't done any, but go on. Yeah, okay. You're in the video, but no, you had nothing to do with it. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> 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 There's a big bullseye painted on my head. But basically there was uh, I was one video in particular that says that like the whole thing is a scam and whatever. Uh-huh. And uh, the idea was that you don't, you're not really a lord if you, with this, through established titles and whatever. And like that, I know that. Like and I, my understanding of that is that like it's a fun gift you give your dad and he goes, I'm a lord, call me mm. lord and whatever. Right. And also lordship's not a real thing. It's just a thing people say. So like that, prop, that part of it, like I don't give a shit. Like it's obviously like a, like a little fun thing that whatever. Mm. But apparently, and I also don't know whether this is true, the environmental elements of it, I don't know like the actual unpacking of it. Some of the because claims supposedly they plant a tree or something. Yeah, but maybe they do or maybe they don't. So at right. the time of recording this, I don't know, and quite frankly, I'm not looking into it. So even like a week or so back, I don't. It's like I had a few more sponsors lined up, and we've ju- I've just dropped them, and I'll probably remove them from the video, but I can't because I'm on this tiny laptop. Sure, right. And also I can't be bothered. No, but Blaming I will. everything on the tiny laptop. Yeah, yeah. But as um, always. anyway, I just want people to know that that's where I'm at, and I'm mostly just not doing it because. I just can't be bothered dealing with it. That's I'd like any of the any of the any of the pushback from it. But also, I know people who are going through with them, mm-hmm. and I would say if you want to criticize like those people in particular, it is still up in the air right. about what this thing is. Okay. So maybe just like okay. just these up a bit All on right. people. And if Christmas is coming, you may have to take that lordship away from your dad, and we we're very apologetic for that. That's right. Yeah. Sorry, Dad. Yeah. I had this lined up for you. <laughs> it's uh. I guess you're just a peasant. Just again, a Dad. just a mean peasant. Mm, that's just, right. Uh, so yeah, and it, there, you, that's, there you go. That's a that's a thing that's yeah. annoying because um, it was it was money, and I liked having all the money. To be oh honest. yeah, yeah. And now One I of the have, best things. I don't to have, have I any think. of that money now. For Mason. convenience's sake, in the world we live in, yeah, having yeah. a bunch of money is actually very good. Yeah, and I deserve it. It's true. <laughs> Which I think is yeah, yeah, yeah. important. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, do you have anything? I've got some emails. Yeah. I don't have any in that sense. Like money. I don't have any money, certainly not. <laughs> not on you? Mm. How much cash you got? I'm not going to tell you. Just tell me. I'll tell you off it. <laughs> okay. Fair how much money I have. <laughs> it's none, isn't it? Yeah, it's probably none. <laughs> uh, this is for Ian. Mm. Uh, subject line, this pod made me visit Australia. Woo! Hi, James and Mesa. I've been a Canadian exchange student in Australia for the past five months. Whoa! Considering I've been listening to the pod since 2015, Whoa. the show has been my main source of access to Australian culture before my trip and one of the reasons I chose the country for my exchange. How accurate were we, though, do you reckon? Well, he says, this has led to many weird moments, like me weirdly laughing when I first spotted a JB Hi-Fi for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> one of our cultural touchstones. <laughs> Sadly, I have not seen any souvlaki huts during my stay. I think no, you might be down. seeing those, yeah. yeah. It's like a Tasmanian tiger. They no longer exist. That's right. They yeah. are extinct. We're trying to clone them. Yeah, we've we got are. Some, we've found some souvlaki DNA in yeah. a car park and we're like... We're and we've got them. Anthony Kudafidis in a cage. That's true. Uh, I also managed to spot Mark from Auntie Donna while walking the streets of Sydney a oh, few you, weeks You'll ago. find him. He's around. Yeah, yeah. This is very weird considering he is one of the only Australian celebs I know. Uh, the show has been a formative experience for me and my humour during the last seven years, and I wanted to thank you. Yeah, thank you. Mm. I hope you're enjoying Australia and our JB Hi-Fis. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, bonus movie anecdote. A relative of mine right. worked on a B-movie with Gary Busey. One morning he showed up to set so intoxicated he managed to crash a car, even though he only had to drive it in a straight line at 20 k's an hour. He got out of the car and walked to his trailer like nothing happened. More like Gary abusive. Whoa. Of alcohol. <laughs> kind of sad when you think about it. Is it is sad. It's, yeah. not, it's not a joke so much yeah. as just an observation of a thing But I like how you did the, I liked how you gave the, the funny nickname. <laughs> I think that was good and important. And it really makes you think. It really brings light to the, the problem, I think. Yeah, okay, you know? cool. Yeah, because yeah, there's layers to it. There is layers. Like true. an onion. Yeah. Okay. Uh, speaking of, Mason, this is from Trey Amundsen, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Now, they talk about a particular cameo in Glass Onion, mm-hmm. which I'm – it's a very minor Zoom cameo, which I'm not going to mention here because mm-hmm. we're in non-spoilers, but so I'll leave that name out. But 
Uh, Trevor says, on the heels of watching League of Extraordinary Gentlemen on Caravan of Garbage and blank in Glass Onion, what are some of the best and worst final roles that you've seen? Because, of course, Sean Connery's final on-screen performance, mm. even though he did a video game and like a terrible animated thing, yeah. was in the movie LXG or That's Leg, right. uh, as people might know it. <laughs> they do call it Leg. <laughs> um, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. So what what do you think best last performances for an wow. actor? Oh, mm. uh, boy. If only I could think of a single actor. Ray Liotta. He oh, keeps Cocaine he, Bear, he, of he, course. It, it, he keeps making things somehow. What about Paul Newman as Doc Hudson in Cars? <laughs> Mate, what about Brandon Lee in The Crow? That I think that's is a, a very great solid one. one. You know, that is that's a that's a a great performance in a movie which could have been like real schlocky and real terrible. Absolutely, How about yeah, that? yeah. Uh, what about uh, what was I going to? Chadwick Boseman didn't he do a cool jazz movie or something? Oh, I didn't see it, but apparently it was cool and jazz. Yeah, and he was good in it. Um, well, I was going to say Heath Ledger for The Dark Knight, but he actually did The Imaginarium of Dr. Panassus That's or whatever exactly afterwards right, yeah. or whatever. I've got a list here from Cracked, Mason. Uh, Robin Williams played a dog in <laughs> absolutely anything. Remember right. that that movie that's, yeah, yeah. that's got some of the Monty Python people in it? Uh, what about John Candy in Canadian Bacon? Okay, I've never seen Canadian That's Bacon. That's a good movie. That's a good movie, fun movie. Um, okay. Jack Nicholson apparently hasn't acted since 2010. Huh. So that could be his he's last role. He's also still alive. And so. he's alive, yeah. Uh, what else we got here? So I'm just going down this list. Oh, Raul goodness. Julia, Street Fighter. Look, not a great movie maybe, but he's very good at that movie. Very memorable. Very Absolutely. memorable. Like you could – like. Of, John claude Van Damme and Kylie Minogue are also in that movie, but they do they have any lines? No. Nah. Who's to say? Don't know. Uh, Bella Lugosi was in uh, Plan 9. Plan 9 from Outer Space. Uh, mm. Christopher Reeve apparently was in Rear Window. I guess that was a remake of Rear Window. I didn't I didn't see that. Um, Elizabeth Taylor's final role was in the Flintstones movie. Huh. And Gene Kelly uh, was also was ma- made the final film that launched the Razzies, which was Xanadu. Oh. So, but what about mm. Philip Seymour Hoffman? His last Hunger movie Games was one something. of the Hunger Games movies. Yeah, but they like CGI him into that. I'm no, that's true. Pretty confident. But he's in. He's like, you know, was that his last last? That was thing? his last last performance. Was one of the Hunger Games movies, and then the final one he was not in, or he was in, you know, okay, re- recreated in some. Fashion. Oh, that's what you mean. Okay, yeah. that's one I was thinking of. There you go. Wow. What was Robert Shaw's last movie? Like, is it, was it Jaws? Robert Shaw, Shank Redemption. <laughs> it's a good joke, Mason. That's not a joke. I didn't say it was. Because you don't remember. I don't remember. <laughs> I'm going to say it. Because it said he died in 1978. Right. No, he was in Avalanche Express. I, I apologize. Avalanche Express. Well, he was in it, all right? Okay, great. It was General Macronokrov. Mm. So that's, you, you, you apologize. Yeah. All right, Mason. I got another tweet here, unless you've got a letter. No, please give me that tweet. Here it comes. Sebastian says, "Are you guys watching the World Cup? What are your favourite sports films?" Uh, I watched the for one of the Australian games. I could have got up early to watch the one where Australia lost. I'm glad I didn't. Uh-huh. Uh, one of the local dads put on a thing. Yeah, yeah. But then McLeans away for the weekend, and I would have had to drag my kids there at five thirty in the morning, and that's just not fucking happening. Uh-huh. Also, we lost. Yeah. So I'm glad I didn't do any of that. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. Maybe they would have won if you. Shown a bit more support. Well, then I'm glad I didn't go <laughs> okay. because fuck them. That's essentially blackmail for them, isn't it? You know? <laughs> no, we're going to th- throw this game. They said they said we're going to throw this game yeah. if you don't support us. And quite frankly, I think that's rude. Mason, don't get me wrong. I'm proud of our boys in green and gold. Yeah. But also, fuck them. Whoa. Uh, my, one of my favourite sport movies is The Replacements with Keanu Reeves where they get a ragtag group of People to fill in a, for an NFL squad. Yeah, and right. It's just a bit of fun. What about Moneyball? Does Moneyball count? Is this no, no I it's about it statistics and yeah, graphs. Yeah, well, that right. no, I think it does. That's Ben's one of Ben's favorite movies. If it's not his favorite, here's one that I really like, mm-hmm. even though it's apparently not that accurate. I like Warrior, which is basically Rocky, but it's MMA. Oh, and that's um, who's in Tom that? Hardy and Joel tell- Edgerton. Oh, what am I thinking of then? I'm thinking of Once Were Warriors. No, interesting. Okay, mm. the wrestler's good. I've never seen the wrestling. I guess the second also, the, wrestling's not a real sport, sport Nathan. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. fake, and you're an yeah. idiot. No, I like. It's a hard thing. I to like do. it very much so, and I think there's a remake. But I like the original Bad News Bears, the Walter Matthau movie. Oh yeah, they were, they were, I think maybe Rob Schneider did one with. Like, there we go. Something. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a that's a good. I, sport I movie. think wrestling. Also, I just want to clarify, it's an incredible <laughs> athletic performance, and they really just churn through people and ruin their bodies and minds and stuff mm. to do that. And you know, and I think it's actually very impressive and fun, even though I don't know anything about it or anybody's names mm. in it. 
Oh, the third bad news. I've looked it up on Wikipedia. The third bad news bear. Let me guess. Yes. Larry the Cable Guy. No. Ah. 1978, the third Bad News Bear bo- Bad News Bears movie, the Bad News Bears go to Japan. <laughs> they did it. They did the thing that you always say. They did the thing that I always say. I didn't yeah. know. I actually didn't know there were there were two things where they go to Japan. No, I didn't know there were any sequels to the original. Oh, okay. So let me guess. So there's Bad News Bears 3, there's Ninja Turtles 3, and yep. there's Tokyo Drift go to Japan. That's great. What are other examples of sequels going to Japan? Robert Shaw goes to Japan. In his Shank Redemption. <laughs> Very tenuous, Mason, but, no, I, no. but I will accept it. <laughs> no, extremely tenuous. <laughs> uh, what's, what else, Mason? Uh, this is from a letter from Spain. This is from Ismail. Oh, my God. Okay, salutations, Nick and James. My name is Ismail and I write to you from Spain. Been a long-time fan of the channel for a long time. Mm. Uh, always enjoyed watching the videos on breaks at high school. Uh, now I mostly listen to the podcast while walking back from work. For the past few months, I've been working as QA on Marvel's Midnight Suns, Whoa. which is re- releasing tomorrow as I'm writing this email. Uh, I can just say that That's working, good working as a big comic book nerd in these kind of projects is super exciting. It requires a lot of control because no one cares as much as we do uh, that the guy who yells Rodney is not in the game. <laughs> <laughs> that is hard. That is very That yeah. is very hard. Maybe in the next DC yeah, yeah. game we'll have that. Kudos, by the way, for uh, for that game. Yeah. Apparently it's very Apparently it's good. good. Yeah. Anyway, it's been a pleasure listening to you both all these years and hope to continue doing it for many more. If you play the game, hope you can uh, meme it as much as I did and enjoy uh, Easter eggs and so on and so forth. I will meme it if I play it. Okay, great. Which I don't know whether I will because I still have to finish Dad of Son or whatever it's called. Yeah, sure. God of, God of Man. <laughs> okay, great. Terrific. Dad of, Dad of Boy. There it we is go. called Dad, <laughs> Dad of Boy. You solved that puzzle with the um, the water wheel or whatever. I, have, I went back to it, and then I think I took the boat the wrong way, and I'm like, I don't know, I don't know about this. It's a great game, mm. uh, Mason. This is from Amanda, who says hashtag Weekly Planet Pod in honor of my birthday today. I would greatly appreciate if you would each tell each other the best birthday to date. If it's not too much trouble or too personal, all the love and appreciation, Amanda. Mason, yes, your birthday go on is often a day of the year. Morning. It's a day of morning. Day of morning. <laughs> For some, uh, and how do you uh, how do you remember it? You know, what do you do to honor it? Ideally, I'm not at work and I just sleep in, and yeah. I don't, and I don't tell anyone, <laughs> and I just and then like weeks later, somebody's like, "When's your birthday coming up?" And I'm like, "It was two months ago." <laughs> and he's throwing his hands up. I throw my like, hands up in victory. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah, uh, ideal birthday. Yeah, mm-hmm. same with me. Leave me alone. Let me sleep in. Leave me alone. Yeah, yeah. I I, I would like actually see my family. Sure, because I do love my family. Mm-hmm. But also, I want to sleep in, and then we do a little activity. <laughs> yeah, and then leave me alone. Nice. Everybody, leave me alone. That's just perfect. Yeah, I, I'd say one of my most memorable birthdays was my thirtieth birthday, a, a mere six months ago. Mason, oh yes, go on. Uh, where where Claire and I lived in a tiny flat, and uh, she, I said, Claire, it's my thirtieth birthday, and I just want to clarify, I don't want to do anything for my birthday. And I don't want a surprise party and I definitely don't want a costume party. And she said, okay. Then what happened? Then on the night of my birthday, a bunch of people stormed into our apartment, friends of ours, in costumes. And yes. I'm like, great. <laughs> and she, But they didn't have a party. They were very serious. <laughs> they were just having regular discussions about life. <laughs> and it was a fun night, but uh, I, didn't, I don't like that. Mm, sure. <laughs> Mason, mm. it was a, I appreciate the, the thought, though. It was fun. It You're was very fun welcome. Fun. But, yeah, yeah. Were you there? I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> I simply can't I think rem- you were there. In this instance, I can't remember. Yeah, you would have been Maybe invited. Have been. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, what's next? That's the end of the show, James. Thank is what's God. Next. Oh, no. You know? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you have, have we had a good podcast, though? I think we've had an extremely good podcast. Do you remember that time. or you just think you, we did? I don't know. I haven't had a lot of sleep. Maybe that's why I don't remember a lot. Me of too. Mm. I had my daughter slipped next to me. She kicked me in the head all night. <laughs> I honestly thought for a second that you said, my daughter slipped my throat. She tried to slip my throat. <laughs> she would too. Yeah, she would. She's a menace. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. We very much appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, we've got a few more weeks to go before we go on a little teeny-weeny little break, I That's think. That's right. 
It's um, not over yet, though, is it, Mason? No, it's true. We've got Titanic this week for Caravan of Garbage. Oh, it's true. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for subscribing on your podcatcher of choice. Thank you for telling your friends because that's how we get to new listeners. And true. thank you for leaving a five-star review. James, you got any reviews there? I do, and these are just in app, like mentioned. You can do it in any app of your choice or the browser or whatever. I don't know. It says the best podcast ever. Seriously? Seriously? Five stars. These two have chemistry like LeBron and Dwayne, Pippen and Jordan, Bay, Brady and Gronk. They seriously make me laugh out loud all the time, and which might embarrass me a little when I'm in public. The goats and I will always be subscribed to BigSandwich.co nice. till my Aussie friends quit. Love from Cincinnati. <laughs> P.S. Skyline is better than Stinky Gold Star. Is that true? Probably. <laughs> It's on the internet. It's got to be true. Yeah, yeah. And this is from Benny the Awesome who says, also five stars, not enough cowbell. James and Mason are my favourite dynamic uh, duo. But also says it's from Joanna. So I don't know. That's the username. So what a know. mystery. A what mystery. a mystery to unfill. Somebody should do an investigative podcast on that review specifically. <laughs> Great. All right. Folks, uh, thank you once again for listening. If you would like to get in contact with us, you can go to Weekly Planet Pod at Gmail, at Facebook, at Twitter, at Bandcamp. You can go to the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group. You want to have some fun civil discussions about podcasts and pop culture. Isn't that a cool group? It's tremendous. You can also go to the Weekly Planet Pod Reddit and Discord. Uh, if you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. If you uh, want to chuck in a buck or an amount you would not miss, you can also go to bigsandwich.co to sign up for nine US dollars per month. You get bonus podcasts, early videos, movie commentaries, and so forth. If you want to follow some more people, you can follow our friend Rob Collings. He's at Raw Collings Whoa. on Twitter. He's at The Weekly Planet on Twitter. He handles all the socials and he's absolutely the best. And he's for real. He is for real. Yeah. Two people who are less for real. It's me. I'm uh, on Twitter at Wikipedia Brown and on Instagram at Nick Meso. James is Mr. Sunday Movies everywhere. Uh -uh. Uh, Let's see. You can buy some T-shirts on TeePublic. Uh, Just search for the Weekly Planet. Uh, Thank you to The Brute and the Basilisk and Rackham for all our musical themes. And that is the show next week. Something else. Uh, Puss in Boots. (laughs) I guess we could watch Puss in Boots. Why not? Let's do something else. Whoa. Let's do something else. Nice. Uh, Cool, man. Uh, Yeah, so um, we'll do another thing and then I'll I'll tell you. Hope to see people at the live show, the Book Cheat live show. Oh, yeah. Have a grand old time there. I won't be there, Mason. My friend Barry is having a Christmas party. Wow. And I'll be going to that. And you know my friend Barry and you know what he'll do to me if I don't go. He'll kill you. He'll kill me. He'll slit your throat. He'll slit my throat. recently resealed up throat. That's right. Wow. All right. Thanks, everybody. I actually don't remember anything about Barry. What? Yeah. He he told you all his secrets. (laughs) Probably because he knew I wouldn't remember. (laughs) We could see Violent Night. Yes. Okay, let's do that. That's Christmassy. Cool. Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.